Sooners shine. They are Rowdy and Lincoln when it comes to Husker football. The season opener moments away as the University of Nebraska kicks it off today at Memorial Stadium in front of yet another sellout crowd. The 276th consecutive game sold out on a Kiyosara College football Saturday. They host the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. Welcome, folks. Bill Land, along with Dave Lapham. Glad to have you with us here in Lincoln. And boy, are they pumped about the Huskers, and rightfully so, Dave. Well, they should be, Bill. They won their last three football games. They went to Colorado and manhandled the Division North champ 30 to 3, and then they turned around and beat Michigan in the Alamo Bowl. Will the momentum carry over? Well, we'll see. I mean, Louisiana Tech in this decade, they've gone down to Tuscaloosa, beaten Alabama. They've gone to East Lansing and beaten Michigan State. They are a quality opponent. We'll see if that momentum carries over today in Lincoln. For the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Certainly one of the reasons the Huskers are so excited is the veteran leadership at quarterback in Zach Taylor. He just doesn't make many mistakes. No, he's battle tested, he's confident, and he's supremely aware of this West Coast offense. He knows every nuance of it. He can tell everybody their assignment, not just his assignments. He knows what everybody's supposed to do every play. And let me tell you, in the huddle, that is a settling feeling. There's another Zach calling the shots for Louisiana Tech. Not near as experienced, though, as Zach Champion. Just eight passes thrown in his collegiate career for the Bulldogs. If they give him some time, though, he's got some big-time receivers. Well, there's no question. Will Zach play like a champion, or will the venue and the opponent be too much for him? But Holland's got 10 400-meter speed. Newman has the best hands in the team. Wheeler is six foot four and he high jumps six eleven in high school. He's got weapons to get it down the field, but will his offensive line be able to hold up against what I think is the best front seven in the Big 12 and maybe one of the top three in the country? That is the key to today's game. It's what's up front that counts. Yeah, the Big Red fans love their black shirt defense, and again, rightfully so. With more on the black shirts, here's Emily Jones. Well, guys, Bill Callahan agrees with you. He says the black shirts are back, and in fact, this is the best defense he's had in his three years at Nebraska. And that's saying a lot considering the Huskers last season led the country in sacks with 50. A big reason for Callahan's optimism is the return of senior defensive end Adam Carricker. Carricker racked up 43 tackles, 17 of those for loss, and nine and a half of those sacks. Plenty of returning starters for this defense, and they're looking to even better their performance from last season, guys. All right, and guess what? A record crowd. They've expanded the stadium here. 80,000 plus to watch Louisiana Tech and Nebraska. Welcome back, Kiyosara College Football Saturday in Lincoln, Nebraska. The Huskers and the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech as Nebraska playing in front of another sellout crowd kicks off the 2006 season and they come from the opposite tunnel from where they used to come out of as they have added some facilities here, including 6,500 more seats. Capacity is over 80,000. They've added another 13 suites to go along with that main deck you see there on the sideline. And that faces head coach Jack Bicknell in his eighth year leading Louisiana Tech 40 and 42. The Bulldogs seven and four a year ago, six and two tied for third in the Western Athletic Conference. Yet they were shunned by the Bull folks. They've got something to prove. And Bill Callahan in his third year as head coach here of the Nebraska Cornhuskers at 13 and 10. Had a bounce back last year, 8 and 4, 4 and 4 in league play. And they ended up winning in the Alamo Bowl against Michigan to finish on a high note, taking their last three games. They're excited about the fact that they are picked as the team to beat in the North this year by most. Bill Land, Dave Lapham, Emily Jones, and we're glad to have you aboard on a very cool day at 57 degrees. We had some heavy showers earlier today, but it is clearing up now. The humidity at 89%, slight breeze out of the north northwest, and we expect just perfect conditions before it's all over day. Bill, the field turf, the, the uh, surface here, is better when it's a little wet. In fact, it's recommended that you water the field turf before the game, even if you have not had any precipitation. It, it responds well to just a little bit of moisture, gives you even better traction. So I don't think the footing will be an issue whatsoever, even with the amount of rain that we had earlier today. Well, you see how long it's been since the Bulldogs have taken one to the house on the kickoff. Yeah. How about that, 89? They've got Patrick Jackson, 23 and Weldon Brown number 35 to take the kick as it comes from Jordan Condon and on the near side at the 10 
the 15, the 20, breaking a tackle and out to the 32-yard line and a fumble. And there'll be a pile up there. 29 yards on the return. And is that a pumped up Louisiana Tech bunch? <laughs> That's what Jack Bicknell wanted to see. Compete in the kicking game. Make some big plays. Don't make any mistakes in the kicking game. That's a big factor when you're a decided underdog like they are today in Lincoln, Nebraska. And boy, just a great vision. Found his lanes, and you talk about a hit. I mean, that's like welcome to Lincoln. Steve Octavian, whew, that was a kiss right there, not a polite one. Weldon Brown, a nice return, though, for Louisiana Tech. And they are at least not pinned in their own end too deeply to start their first series. First and 10 at the 32 for champion. Hands off the football, nothing for Patrick Jackson. That Husker defense stops him at the 30. Jay Moore, 6'4", 280, a senior from Elkhorn, Nebraska, makes the stop. Zach Champion is a junior out of Birmingham, Alabama, 6-1, 2 10. Two games last year, two of two for 16 yards. They do like his future, but he is certainly going to face some pressure today. We'll give you the rest of the Kyocera starting lineup for Louisiana Tech in just a moment. It'll be a second down and 12 after a loss of two on that first play. They operate from their 30. Champions pass is incomplete, intended for Jonathan Holland. Let's take a look at our Kia Sarah starters, and we'll start with the big fellas up front. And Tyler Miller is the leader of that group, a 6'7", 300-pound junior out of Waco, Texas. And you see the rest with Lindsey Considine has moved to the tackle spot today. The backs and the receivers, Jackson, Holland, Newman, Wheeler, and James. Holland, 29 receptions for 421 yards last year. He is a speedster. Third and 12 from the 30 for Louisiana Tech. Champion, high snap. Got oh. hammered. There is sack number one for the Huskers, who had 50 last year. And it is Adam Carricker, the senior, a preseason All-American. And he's showing you why. Yeah, Adam Carricker is, is big time. And, and here he is working right here. Just gets the upfield move. And you got to move your feet a little bit better than that. Marcus Lindsay got his feet in concrete a little bit. It has to be able to move a little bit because Adam Carricker has got a high, high motor. Cagle to punt it away for Louisiana Tech, standing on his own 10. Reaches midfield, and the Huskers receive it on the run there. And the ball will be down. We'll see where they actually mark the football. Bill, it was typical Nebraska defense in that series. First and 10 tackle for loss. They had 140 of those last year, getting Louisiana Tech off schedule. And then immediately a sack out of Adam Character, 50 sacks last year. 32 yard punt for Zach Taylor now to set up and operate. The 6 2 senior from, yes, Norman, Oklahoma. His father, a standout player for the Sooners many years ago, and Taylor. On a first and ten, hands it off. The Huskers do want to establish that running game, and Marlon Lucky, one of four running backs expected to get considerable time today. Let's take a look at our Kiyosara starters for the University of Nebraska offense. You saw Taylor, who runs the show. The offensive line, another outstanding group, but there are some questions that need to be answered if they're going to get their running game going. And the backs and receivers, Lucky, Todd Swift, none. Matt Herrian, a comeback story that we'll get into later on. Broken play, and Taylor has to keep the football on a second down and seven from the 48. And he is stopped near the 47 as Day and Harris were there in on the tackle for the Bulldogs. And Kiyosara presents the Louisiana Tech defensive group up front McGilton, Muse, and West Day. Muse, a junior out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, veteran player. Harris, Jackson, Beveridge among the backers along with Macbeth. And then Brown, Dillard, Abrams, and Moss, the secondary for the Bulldogs. Zach Taylor showed his football IQ there. He didn't get the handoff clean to Lucky. What he did is he turned around, he hit the designated hole, and he made a, a catastrophe at least palatable. Third down and six. Taylor, first down on the completion. Out of oh, they ruled him out of bounds. I beg your pardon, as France Hardy on the reception was out of bounds, covered by Torrance Hampton, a senior out of Starkville, Mississippi. 
Yeah, you have to come down with one foot in bounds in college football, and he just takes it to the sideline, and that left foot is on out in on the white line. There's no question about it. He is out of bounds. The fans don't think so, but his toes were definitely out of bounds. Good call by the official right there, right on the spot. And the fans get a closer look than maybe even the officials with this humongous new Husker right. Vision television screen that measures 117 feet wide that is part of the renovations here. I just need a bark -a lounger and a pizza, and I'm set. <laughs> Freddie Franklin is deep to return as Titchener will punt it away for Nebraska. A south lot of Cheyenne, Wyoming. And oh. into the end zone, and it'll come back on the touchback. We'll take a brief timeout after a 47 yard punt by Titchener for the Huskers. Yeah, they love their big red here in Lincoln. Stay with us. College football on FSN is presented by Kia Sara, the new value frontier. And brought to you in part by eHarmony.com. Are you ready to fall in love? By Burger King, have it your way. And by Dr. Pepper, 23 flavors that add up to one bold taste. Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. Husker Nation with a full house. Second possession for Louisiana Tech. No score in Lincoln. Champion fakes the handoff for the Bulldogs and passes and it is dropped by Holland out near the 30 yard line. And let's now take a look at the Kia Sarah starters defensively for the University of Nebraska as the Huskers who last year had 50 sacks to lead the nation. And Dave's mentioned their front seven is stout. Moore, Cryer, Dog and Duro, as well as Carricker, and the linebackers, deep group. McEwen is a stud there, so is Rude. And in the secondary, Jones, Green, Shanley, and Grigsby. Some of those guys have moved over from the offensive side. We'll fill you in more about them later on. It is second and 10 at the 20. Champion. Flushed out of the pocket. Sack number two. Yes, sir. Inside the 10 yard line. Are these Huskers fired up? Moore and Carriker, sandwich champion. Well, they, they were trying to run the screen, and Chris, Chris and, and, and the screen was defended very well by Nebraska. Watch him defend the screen. Watch Bradley right here. Nowhere to go. He covers the screen, and that turns into a quarterback sack. What champion has to do is throw the ball away. Don't take the sack if the screen's not there. So take, let's take a look at the keys for Louisiana Tech. They want to win the big play battle. They'd like four or five plays of 40, 45 yards or more and don't give any up. Avoid third and long, third and extra long. That's when Nebraska can really heat you up and then compete in that kicking game. And right now they're looking at third and extra long and they don't want to be here. Keys to the game brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Third and 20, as Dave mentioned, just exactly the disaster plan that Coach Picknell would like to avoid. Play a game on the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. There's the call from referee Tom Walker here today. As we do have some rule changes that you might be aware as we're just underway with college football. And certainly one of those will be a speedier game because of the clock being started on kickoffs when the ball is kicked and well as on most of the time on a change of possession. Champion from his own end zone. Looking deep for Holland and incomplete as Jonathan was matched down there by Courtney Grigsby. Well, Champion didn't have a whole lot of time to throw the football because Adam Carricker was in his face once again. Now he's over the left guard. He put pressure, you get the sack at right guard. Now they move him over the left guard and he gets the hit. That's what the Raiders used to do with Howie Long. Move him up and down the line of scrimmage. A defensive tackle, defensive end. Everybody got a chance at Howie Long, or he got a chance at them. Bill Callahan understands and remembers that. Cagle out of his own end zone boots it and Louisiana Tech will down it but it's near the 36 yard line of the Bulldogs 31 yard punt. Let's take a break now. Dr. Pepper game break. We send it off to Mike Goldberg and friends. And number one Ohio State on the board early at the horseshoe first possession against the Huskies of Northern Illinois eight plays 66 yards capped off by this Troy Smith to Ted Ginn Jr. Touchdown pass the number one Ohio State University leads Northern Illinois seven and nothing. Huskies up at the horseshoe today. Thank you Mike first to 10 ball on the 36 yard line Nebraska seeing if they can take advantage of excellent field position after the punt. Tech with a force up there. 
Takes a while for that forward well, motion to be stopped with those big fellas leading the way for the Huskers. That looked like a rugby scrum. Everybody was inside of the hash marks. That was a power formation. Bill Callahan saying, I'm going after it. Let's take a look at the Dr. Pepper keys here, and he wants to establish that run. Last year, averaging just 2.7 yards a carry, 94 yards on the ground. Wants to get off to a fast start, get the tempo going, and, get in, and establish an aggressive style of play, and then play clean. No turnovers, avoid penalties, avoid assignment errors. Play well. Second down at seven. The ball on the 33. Huskers with again the ground game and out to the 30. Nebraska only one pass attempt as Cody Glenn getting the carry. Sophomore from Rusk, Texas. Bill Callahan's got Lucky. He's got Brandon Jackson, Cody Glenn, and Kenny Wilson. And they say all four are going to get action today. And again, everybody in the formation between the hash marks. Nebraska is saying we're going to play smash mouth football. This formation, they have 10 in tightly. Ten, right here, 10. That's Lonesome Soldier out there. Smash mouth formation. Any motions? Third and three. And the pitch. 25 flag throw. 10. And a touchdown if it stands. There's a flag throw. And this is what Bill Callahan was talking about playing cleanly. Avoid the penalties, avoid the turnover. Kenny Wilson's going to have it called back. Wilson, the junior college transfer. And Wilson, at 220 pounds, runs a 4 4 40. Here's, let's take a look. Oh, right here. There's the hold right there. They got, they got the, uh, the takedown in the open field. Here comes the motion man. Watch him crack. He gets a nice crack back block, but right there was the takedown block. That, that sealed the, their edge that time for Kenny Wilson. And that's uh, unfortunate. And that's what Bill Callahan was talking about. You have a touchdown taken off the board because of a penalty. Now, it wasn't a pre-snap penalty. It wasn't a mental error, jumping off sides, wrong formation or anything. But it was, it was an execution error. You can't reach out and grab and hold and, and nullify a touchdown like that. As a result, third and 13, you saw the problem the Huskers had in third down conversions last year. Let's see what they do here on the third and long situation at the 39. Taylor got time. Oh, oh my goodness. Right off the shoulder pads of Hardy. Well, what you have to do, it sounds elementary, Bill, but it's also true. You have to get your hands out and catch the football with your hands. You don't let it get into your body and ricochet off your shoulder pads. You, you, you run into trouble that way. Get your hands out in front of your body and secure the football with your hands, not with your body. And that's the mistake that uh, that, that Hardy made. So Titchener is on for the punt. 47 yard of the first time. Louisiana Tech has got to be delighted. They got a break with the penalty. Right. And uh, avoid the touchdown. <laughs> Trying to pooch kick it inside the 20 and does so the That's the one thing Jack Bicknell didn't want to have happen. You want to make big plays in the kicking game and no big mistakes, and that's a humongous mistake giving Nebraska the ball in the red zone, short field. You got to compete in the kicking game. That was one of the keys to the game for Louisiana Tech. Freddie Franklin can't hang on. And, and Franklin has the best hands on the team. He made the same mistake. Get out with your hand. Don't let it ricochet off your shoulder pads. When the ball hits your shoulder pads, it's going to go crazy. It's haywire. Off his pads. See you later. And Nebraska comes up with a fortuitous bounce right there for the for the red jerseys. Barry Turner pounced on it for Nebraska. And the Huskers now get it right back. First and 10 on the 15 of Louisiana Tech. Smash nice. On the ground as they continue to try to pound it in. Ball carried by number 20. Nobody is is flanked out at the receiver position. Everybody is bunched up between the hash marks. I mean, it's a tight, tight configuration, and Bill Callahan saying we're bigger, stronger, more physical. We're going to try to knock you around by this formation. Let's see if it continues. Lucky picks up three. He's the lone back again. Second down and seven. Let's see if we get motion here. Mueller sets up strong to the left side now. Lucky cuts it back inside the 10, down near the six-yard line. 
And Quinn Harris, the sophomore from Visalia, California, the Sam linebacker for Tech, makes the tackle on Marlon Lucky, a sophomore out of North Hollywood, California. Bill in high school, 484,881 yards and 81 touchdowns. This kid's got great vision, draws, counters. Those are the kind of plays that they like to run with him because of that vision and his ability to find cutback lanes like he did there. Ran for 129 total here at Nebraska as a freshman. And it's third and two, ball on the seven for the Huskers. See Todd, the fullback, setting up closer now to Taylor. Lucky stays on as the tailback. Taylor, quick drop, looking in the end zone. And out of bounds. Great effort that time. Moss was covering Nate Swift, the sophomore out of Hutchinson, Minnesota. In college football, there's no such thing as a force out. You have to come down with the foot in bounds, one foot. It's not like in the NFL, if you go airborne, you get pushed. You go airborne, he might have gotten pushed, but he came down with his foot out of bounds. There's no rule stating that the verticality rule. If you go up in the air, even if you pushed out of bounds, somehow you have to get your foot in bounds. Swift couldn't quite get that done. Nice throw by Zach Taylor. Fourth and two, and Glenn comes in as the running back. They'll go for it from the seven. No score yet here in Lincoln. Taylor. Oh, picked up and intercepted and brought out by Anthony D. Anthony Smith, a freshman from Pittsburgh, Louisiana, and Louisiana Tech. First of all, they dodged a bullet on a penalty. Now they come up with a key turnover. They were in the top five in the country last year at turnover margin. They repeat here. Boy, it's just a great, that's a tip ball. Outstanding. Sarah College Football Saturday rolls on here in Lincoln. Huskers and Louisiana Tech no score. The Huskers, the national leader in sacks last year with 50. They've already got a couple today. They've dominated on the defensive end but they've made some key mistakes that have kept them from the scoreboard. And La Tech on the first and 10. And Jackson carries it all the way out for Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. It'll be a first and 10 at the 41-yard line. And a 19-yard pickup. Anthony James, the big tight end for Louisiana Tech with an outstanding block, doing a good job on the edge against Jay Moore and giving a nice lane for his running back to take advantage of. And boy, was it ever taken advantage of by Jackson. First and 10, the ball on the 41-yard line. And the handoff, Jackson is slowed and stopped at the 45. Time for Dr. Pepper game break. Here's Mike Goldberg. Hey, Bill, we told you how number one Ohio State scored on their opening possession. How about number seven, West Virginia, taking on Marshall. The second meeting of the in-state rivals since 1924. Pat White to Brandon Miles. 7-0 Mountaineers early lead. Louisiana Tech, second down seven. Ball on the 44-yard line. First quarter action here in Lincoln. Champion, time to throw, incomplete. Anthony James, the intended target. Big senior, 6'6", 257 pounder from James Baton Rouge, incomplete. Louisiana. Nice job by a middle linebacker. Ian, he, just did a, he had seven sacks last year, 22 tackles for loss, and three interceptions. That's a complete defensive stat sheet stuffer right there. Interestingly enough, the leader of the Here's offense the wears number 13, the, the leader of the defense line. wears number 13. Larry McCune, junior out of Naperville, Illinois. Always in the middle of the action. Third down and seven. Husker crowd making some noise. Champion completes it to Jackson out of the backfield. Champion Got nothing. Number 23, They'll have Jackson. to kick it away as Bradley makes the stop. Stuart Bradley, a senior out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Well, Louisiana Tech faced another third and long. They faced third and long and third and extra long early in their offensive series in this football game, and that was a key for them. Stay out of those third and longs, third and extra longs when Nebraska can really get after you with blitz packages. None is the deep man on the punt from Cagle. None catches it in full stride, dodges one, and then steps out of bounds near the 35-yard line after a 29-yard punt from Louisiana Tech. No score, Bulldogs and Huskers on Kiosera College Football Saturday.
Emily Jones here in Lincoln, Nebraska for Kyocera College Football Saturday. No score here in the first quarter between Louisiana Tech and Nebraska. And the Huskers don't host homecoming festivities until November 4th. However, it is a homecoming of sorts for Louisiana Tech defensive coordinator George Darlington. He spent 30 years with the Corn Huskers and during that time became the first Division I assistant coach to amass 300 plus wins with the same program. He is now with Louisiana Tech. He's got to be pleased with what his team is doing thus far against the high-powered Huskers. Guys. Yeah, thank you, Emily. As Marlon Lucky shreds that defense for a rarity so far today, Des Abrams makes the tackle. Huskers did have a touchdown run by Wilson, called back by penalty, but it's Darlington telling his team, he said, hey, you've never been here before. You'll never meet better fans, win or lose. He goes, they support their team, and they're the classiest in the country to the other. And you saw Coach Darlington using hand signals. It gets so loud here. He said a lot of communication. You have to use visual signals from the sideline and on the football field. Hand off and Tech defense there on the first and 10. The ball starts at the 45 yard line as Jackson makes the tackle as well as Abrams on the play. Well, and the play should be louder. Today's attendance 85,181, a new Memorial Stadium record. The previous mark was 78,268 in 02 against Texas. And for the additional 6,500 seats in the one end zone, as well as the suites, bigger is better here in Lincoln. Second down and seven. And Lucky, maybe a yard near the 49 yard line before he is stopped by the Bulldogs. You know, Coach Darlington had a feeling Nebraska was going to try to get that running game going, and he's got his defensive players, the down linemen and linebackers are. Hitting their gaps. I mean, the fits between the linebackers and defensive linemen in those gaps, the gap control integrity has been great. There's been nowhere for Nebraska to go. They're all playing their responsibilities effectively up front. Well, Nebraska, no bones about it, wanted to improve their run game. Only averaged 96 yards a game on the ground last year as a team. Lucky for their Jackson getting his first shot. We'll have to keep track of that because they rotate them. Brandon Jackson, a junior out of Horn Lake, Mississippi, is stopped by Anthony Crosby. That was just a great move by an individual. The vision and then the cutback. Blocking over pursuit just a little bit. The big down lineman trying to make a play is Joshua Muse, the nose tackle. He just overran it. He didn't play his gap control responsibility effectively enough. Trying to do too much. He's a big 18-wheeler, and the running back can change direction like a Ferrari in open field. He can. No backfield here as they toss over the middle, and it is incomplete. Tended for none. For number 83, Terrence Nunn. Incomplete. Collins covering on the play for Louisiana Tech. Louisiana Tech, number 20, Sandy Ray you know, Collins. Here's, here's what Nebraska was looking at last year. Very un-Nebraska-like. Last in the conference in yards rushing per game, second to last in yards. The efficiency wasn't there. Only 10 rushing TDs also second to last in the league. I mean... The West Coast offense, I played the West Coast offense in the NFL, and you have to be able to run the football and execute it well. Taylor all five pitches at this time after having trouble in the passing game, and again, nothing doing on a second down and 10, and stopped near the line of scrimmage. Well, number 27, Kenny Wilson. Kenny Wilson carrying the football, and Louisiana Tech's defense up to the challenge thus far. Mark Dillard leading the way. What you have to do is stay on your feet if you're a defensive football player. And for the most part, Louisiana Tech stays on their feet and they rally to the football. Look at all the white jerseys coming coming right around the ball. Four or five defenders there. It's a pretty good job. I mean, you have an initial good contact by Dillard and then inside out pursuit by his teammates to help. Third down and nine. The ball at the 41 for Nebraska. Taylor, plenty of time, and delivers. Purify inside the 15-yard line on the reception. Maurice Purify, a junior from Eureka, California, brought down by Collins of the Bulldogs. 31 yards on the pickup. A junior college addition to Nebraska, 6'4", 210 pounds. Had 19 touchdown catches last season at the junior college level. Presents himself as a very big target, and, he's, and he shows good speed. Size-speed ratio is definitely there, and he runs away from Sandy Ray Collins a little bit. Taylor's first completion puts him number eight on the all-time passing list at Nebraska, passing Scott Frost, and he's got another one here, and a touchdown. Oh, my. 
and it is Matt Harrion who makes the reception and what a capper to his comeback story on the opening game. Bill what uh, a story this guy is in perseverance diligence never say die don't quit on it he had a compound fracture of his leg. They put a rod in there, had to re-break and put a rod back in, and here he is all by his lonesome. Louisiana Tech lost total track of Matt Herrion in the back corner of the end zone in his first game back after missing all of last year rehabilitating. He scores a touchdown. That's just, that's a great story. And now for the point after Congdon, and the kick is good. It took Nebraska a while. There's 154 to go here in this first quarter, but the Huskers get on the board on the TD pass from Taylor to Harriet. And, and Harriet just all he does is just run a little corner out and they lose track of them by formation. Louisiana Tech lost track of their coverage responsibilities. That's what George Tar Darlington was concerned about. Personnel groups, formations. We've seen all the different shifting and motion that Nebraska has done and Harriet lined up as basically a wing back and, and all he did was run a corner out to the back corner of the end zone and nobody picked him up and covers responsibility and that's a mental error and that's what George Darlington was talking about. He hoped that his young people would be able to handle the formations and the motions in Nebraska. That time they lost track of the big tight end. And Harrion with the TD reception for Nebraska 13 yard pass from Taylor and the senior out of Pierce Nebraska Boy, he's got to feel good after getting that one. And uh, they've said he's made progress, and it's taken a while, but coaches were telling us, Dave, they're really excited about the way he's looked, particularly in the last week or two. And in, in a good West Coast offense, a tight end, a big tight end like he is, 6'5", 245 pounds, that can run and stretch the field, run down the hash mark and stretch the field, is worth his weight in gold. And his career reception average before this year was over 20, 20.6 20 yards per catch. He was a big play guy before suffering that uh, severe leg injury. Our Super 8 scoring drive for Nebraska, eight plays, 65 yards. Herrien on the receiving end, and Taylor hits two straight. The second one gets him a TD, and it's Nebraska with a 7-0 lead of Louisiana Tech. Jackson and Brown are deep again as Congdon will kick it off here for Nebraska. Jackson. Broke a couple of times and then a swarm hits him and stuffs him at the 15 yard line. A six yard return for Patrick Jackson. That's pretty good coverage right there when you're talking about a kickoff return only generating six yards. Anytime you can pin a team back inside the 20 when covering a kickoff, you've done a phenomenal job. Eisenhardt making the tackle for the Huskers. And as we mentioned, with the clock moving, the moment the ball is kicked on a kickoff, it will speed things up. And coaches are concerned generally that it will shorten the game and cost them maybe 10, 15 plays a game. Well, with the clock moving here as champion, keeps and slides into the 20-yard line, and we'll take a Dr. Pepper game break. Bill Land, number 19, Penn State, hosting the Akron Zips. The post-Michael Robinson era begins. The new quarterback is Anthony Morello. Morelli, the junior, to the sophomore Deion Butler, 42 yards for the score. 41st season for 79-year-old Joe Paterno as the head coach of the Nittany Lions. Thank you, Mike. As we look at Marcus Lindsay lining up. Oh, man, 6'7", 378 pounds. That's a condo in there at right guard. It was 385. Maybe he's been on a diet since they got to Lincoln. <laughs> the convoy did not do enough leading there as Jackson again is stopped on the play at the 20. Let's watch the big man come off the ball. And uh, boy, when he absorbs you, you're, you're definitely uh, absorbed. That's the old pancake block. You know, you take him to the ground. Gets the big mitts on, locks him up, and uh, he, he starts a little bit of a hole. But the unblocked linebacker, just a Textbook picture perfect tackle right there. Big old uh, Marcus Lindsay is trying to melt down a little bit. The coaches don't want him at 385 pounds. And he really doesn't want to be there, but he likes to eat, obviously. Who was the biggest you ever were in your playing days? Heaviest I was playing days. 287 was probably the heaviest I ever played at. Well, that ends the first quarter here in Lincoln. The Huskers had some mistakes, but finally got it going on their last drive, and it's Nebraska with a 7-0 lead on Kiyosara's College Football Saturday on FSN. 
Nebraska 7-0 leader over Louisiana Tech. Kyocera's college football Saturday in Lincoln as we prepare to start quarter number two. First down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Search, shop, and save up to 70% at Overstock.com. Bill Land, Dave Lapham, and Emily Jones with you here on FSN. Louisiana Tech with the football to start the second quarter. Third and five for the 20 for the Bulldogs. And the pass is complete. Holland, he motors forward near the 34-yard line, and that will move the chains. And Tech's first completion for positive yards for champion and crew today. But you know, all things considered, for a young quarterback, not a young, necessarily young quarterback, inexperienced, right. he wasn't shell shocked in the first quarter. No, I, I think that as his team generated confidence, so did he, and that's a pretty good throw. And uh, you know, you look at Holland. Why is he that open? Well, he's got he's the speed guy. He has he runs the 10 400 meters. He was a 60 and 200 meter champ in his conference indoor track and field. I mean, he can fly. You got to give him room. Champion getting 14 on that play. Patrick here looking for an edge. And the sideline is shut down at the 40 yard line. Barry Turner came up with that fumble recovery earlier. Makes the play there. He's a sophomore from Antioch, Tennessee. Boy, I'll tell you what, Kevin Cosgrove, the defense coordinator, is not fooled around. Barry Cryer lost the edge, you contain a little bit, and he was immediately taken out of the football game. I mean, you know, they have so many effective defensive linemen. Nebraska will roll eight defensive linemen in up front and six linebackers. Their front seven is 14 deep, and they're all good football players. Competition for position creates urgency for the players, and certainly they've got that opportunity here on a second down and three. Jackson again carrying the football close to the first down, but a little shy it appears as Dillard makes the tackle. Phillip is a sophomore out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. You know, it's interesting when you watch Louisiana Tech, they're totally opposite of Nebraska. Nebraska running a lot of motion, a lot of formation, a lot of personnel groups. Louisiana Tech is very, very basic. They're running about three or different, three or four different formations. No audibleization, check with knees at the line of scrimmage. They're not putting the burden of responsibility on Zach Champion. They're not making him win the game, just manage it. Third and one, and Jackson tries to squirt forward. The ball popped loose, but they had whistled it dead, and he does have the first down. Dillard was there making the stop for the Huskers. Jackson, a sophomore of Edgar, Louisiana. Last year ran for 367 yards and six scores. Great kick return man. Averaged over 27 yards per return last year. You know, one of the big plays in this football game, and, and Coach Darlington's got to be excited about it, is when Louisiana Tech fumbled the punt. And on a, on a sudden change, his defense rose to the occasion. Quinn Harris, the linebacker, tipped it. And, uh, and it was intercepted. That was a big play. 7 0 Nebraska. Champion wanting a big play. Holland got the big play. Complete inside the 20 of the Huskers as Grixby was covering Holland to the best of his ability. But the senior from Archibald, Louisiana, rolls for 36 yards. And that's what Louisiana Tech wants. They know it's going to be tough to go on 10, 12 play drives against Nebraska. So what do you do? You have the speed guy on the edge just run a go route. He's basically a skinny post, and he does he does a nice job of getting inside of Grixby, and, and the protection's good enough. And you know they have skilled people to get the football to if they keep champion on his feet to deliver. Two receivers set wide right. Patrick the tailback to hand it off to him. Turns the corner. 15 cuts it up and stumbled near the 10 yard line. It'll be a first and goal now for Louisiana Tech. As Shanley makes the tackle, Andrew is a senior out of St. Edward, Nebraska, but 11 yards for Patrick Jackson. Well, Jack McNell is, is excited about this because the game is not too big for his young football team. And it, excellent on the, on the perimeter, excellent blocking. Look at down the football field. Anthony James comes off the double team and gets to the next level. He blocks two on that play. Anthony James, a captain of the football team, 6'6", 257 pounder. He get it done, and he did it that time for Patrick Johnson. First and goal from the nine officially. Champion. Got loose down to near the six, inside the six yard line where Tier Green, a strong safety, makes the tackle. You know, and we talked about Louisiana Tech's mantra is anytime, anywhere. 
You know, they've gone to Tuscaloosa and won. They've gone to East Lansing and won. They've upset Fresno State when they're top, you know, last year. They, they upset them in the last game of the season after uh, Fresno State had, had a heck of a run all year long. Louisiana Tech, they know how to play well in the big games. Second down and goal from the six yard line. Champion got some time, still got some time, and now has to throw it away. Looking for Anthony James, but he was double covered in the end zone. And that's a smart play. When you're this deep into the red zone, inside the 10 yard, you don't take a quarterback sack, you don't you lose yards, and you don't turn it over. You throw the football away and you live for another down. Now it's third down, you still have another shot to score. And you, again, you don't take a sack, you don't jeopardize, put your team in jeopardy by making a poor decision. Kick the field goal, get, get some points on the board. Newman and Holland go wide left, Wheeler wide right on a third and goal from the six for Louisiana Tech. Trying to knot it up, they trail 7-0. Champion. Looking for Holland. Holland wanted a flag. There was a flag, but it was thrown in the backfield, and yep, it's against the Bulldogs. Yeah, Jay Moore says he was held. Jay Moore on the edge said they grabbed me. Good pass rushing defensive end. For the Corn Huskers. Let's take a look at him right here. See what does happen. He does get grabbed a little bit and taken to the turf. Yeah, Constantine got his money's worth. Well, he's smart. He's already graduated. <laughs> Not smart enough to get away with that one. Yeah, he got, he, he's got his degree in economics already. It's pretty strong. The kid understands time management. But... So Louisiana Tech try to settle for three here. And Orladell, <laughs> the whack leader among active kickers and field goals made with 26. 18 of 26 last year as long as a 46 yarder sets up the 13 for a 23 yarder and connects. So Louisiana Tech is on the board on the field goal by Danny Horvadel and it's a 7 3 game. Nebraska with a 7 3 lead as Louisiana Tech connects on a 23 yard field goal to get back on the board. Tomorrow night, don't miss an FSN special event. It's the story of a team who discovered that heart was their greatest strength. I have the storm premieres tomorrow. That's right after TCU and Baylor, right here on FSN. You know, uh, Bill, the Bengals drafted a guy named Andrew Whitworth, a second round draft pick out of LSU, and he was telling me that he organized a couple of 18 uh, foot trailers to go through campus and, and collect all kinds of items for victims of Katrina and how the football team got all involved. And he was a ringleader in that thing. It's a heck of a story, boy. It really is. Ostricker with the kickoff attempt here. Green inside the 15 and now takes it out to the 25 and falls. Just over near the 26 yard line, a 14 yard return. Our Super 8 scoring drive for Louisiana Tech and Coach Picknell, 12 plays, 80 yards, 533 is what it took. And that's important too, Dave. They want to eat some clock here and keep this thing as tight as they can. The, the saving grace for, uh, the, uh, for Nebraska on that is the field position. So they covered 80 yards in 12 plays. I mean, if Louisiana Tech wasn't backed up, it would have been an easier score, but I mean, to go 12 plays against that black shirt defense is, is pretty good execution. Jack McNell has to be happy about that. His football team responded to the touchdown that Nebraska scored by generating a score of their own. Now, let's see what Taylor and the Huskers can do on a first and 10. Little play action. He got hammered hard, and it is incomplete. No flag thrown, intended for Nate Swift. Tony Moss in coverage, the senior. He's the one with the experience back there. And, and Zach Taylor, little play action pass. This is the life of the quarterback. You deliver the football and you get smoked. And he was sacked 36 of the 38 times that his, that his offense broke down. He got beaten up a lot last year. And many times he never saw completions take place. And they're trying to do a better job of protecting them this season. McGilton applying the hammer there. Second and 10 from the 26. And they come back to the run game. Not much doing though for Cody Glenn as a stuffing hit. He forced himself to get a yard or two. Chad Beveridge was there and listen in on this pop. Man, I'll tell you what, some, some big hits. This is a good job of playing your gap responsibility. And I'll tell you, that was a, a, a big hit 
by Marvin Lubin right there as he filled his gap control responsibility beautifully. And, and he brought the leather now. He, he brought it all. Lubin applying the big hit. Taylor got good protection here and completes it out to the 40-yard line. Nicely done as Hardy on the reception before he goes out of bounds. Anthony Moss beaten on the play. And Taylor to Hardy for 13 yards, and that'll move the change for Nebraska. Hardy's excited because his first opportunity couldn't quite get his foot in bounds, incomplete, and then one bounced off his shoulder pads. This time he gets the hands out there and, 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 and makes, a, makes a good reception. And it all starts up front. Look at the protection. A great lane for Zach Taylor is vision totally unimpeded. You give a quarterback that much time and that much uh, opportunity to visualize down the field, you're in trouble. It's three of nine for 54 yards. Got a touchdown strike to Harry and earlier. A little pump fake now flushed out of the pocket. Got a little room. 40, 45, and then diving for the first down marker that was midfield. He comes up short by a yard, but nicely done on a first and 10 as Harris putting the pressure on him and he picks up around nine. I think Martha is going to be called for holding. I think Martha may have, may have gotten caught with his hand in the cookie jar here. I think this one's going to be negated. It's a big left tackle for Nebraska and he's uh, coming off the field right now. Holding 76 offense 10 yard penalty repeat first down. It is Leiden Martha. Martha 6 7 315 pound sophomore from Hutchinson Minnesota. Here he is on the very edge and and he, and he jams, and then all of a sudden, uh, jams again, locks up and grabs that left hand, and whoop, takes him to the turf. He can't do the After takedown. The brings up first down, 20 to keep, go. Uh, keep the hands inside, and that was Quinn Harris, the linebacker. You don't have to grab the linebackers, just jam them away from you. Now first and 20, the ball on the 30-yard line. And they dump it right over the middle. And out across 45, and lucky he is just short of that first down as he got 18 on that pop right there. And Des Abrams makes the tackle in the secondary. This is just a great call by Jay Norvell because, you know, it's first and 20. What are you going to do? You're going to heat him up. So all you do is slide the back out of there and run the little, little uh, screen, little middle screen. And basically the linebackers are vacated on the blitz. Draws and screens when you're expecting a big pass rusher. Great calls. That was a good job. Taylor now 4 of 10 for 73. Lucky getting his first reception. Four different receivers have made catches today. Back on the ground, Cody Glenn carries the football for the first down to the 48-yard line of Louisiana Tech, where Chad Beveridge makes the tackle for the Bulldogs. Boy, how, how nice a, uh, a scenario is it for you as a, as a head coach to have four quality running backs that give you a little different dimension? Every one of them, one's a make-you-miss guy, one's a downhill guy, one's a vision guy. And, and they all bring something to the table and you know they have to be unselfish when you're tired raise your hand get out of there let the next guy in keeping them all happy is going to be a challenge yeah that will be difficult because they've all got some serious talent 7-3 Nebraska wanting more and lucky goes to the 45 yard line picks up a couple here lucky getting a six carry Glenn with four Jackson and Wilson Jackson with one Wilson with two as Smith and Abrams make the tackle and that's been a big story up in Nebraska from the Husker faithful say hey, we want a starter who's it going to be coach and well we can only list co starters and then they're actually going to play four and so far they've lived up to their word is just moving people in and out by field. Lucky uh, he basically said no to USC he's a Hollywood California guy said no I want to go to Nebraska. Second and eight from the forty five and lucky trying to take it to the house. Stopped at the 34 yard line. Abrams the tackle after a 12 yard gain. And the chains move again for Nebraska. They're starting to develop some real momentum here. Yeah, this is just an inside zone play with a lead block by the fullback. Does a nice job and tremendous acceleration by Lucky. The boys just double teaming coming off the linebacker level and Lucky keeping his, his head up because he's got those tremendous eyes. Boy, does he have great vision and he can feel the cuts before they happen. First and 10 at the 34 for the Huskers. Todd the man in motion. They come right back to Lucky. Slips by one man, then cuts it up. Hey, what? That was a terrific run, even though he may have only gotten five or so. Torrance Hampton makes the tackle. Boy, talk about vision. Yeah, vision, and then he thumped Lubin. And, and this was good contact. Lubin bringing it, but Lucky said, you know what? I'm going to lower my shoulder and thump you. 
that, that's a pretty good job right there. And man, just he just got, got after it. And, and Hampton took was worse to wear after that play as well. He ran over the little defensive back. Glenn replaces Lucky now. Second and four. Ball at the 28 after that six-yard gain by Lucky. Glenn gets the carry. Well, what do you need for motivation, huh, Dave? Is he stopping all that? Five balls loose. I think it was blown dead, though. I did too. All these running backs the knowing that, hey, you never know when you're going to get in the rotation again. You better make great effort. You're exactly right. Competition breeds excellence of performance. I mean, that's a coach's dream is to have multiple players that you can count on and rely on, and, and you get after it. Bill Callahan loves to, the competition because cream rises to the top and to the top, and there's nothing wrong with having, you know, three or four guys that can bring that cream. Lucky saying, "Hey, I'm first in line. I'm right here, coach. I am your man." Bill Callahan starting his third year here with Nebraska. Folks think it'll be a breakthrough year, and you keep getting runs like that from Cody Glenn, toughing his way down to the 19, and they just might be right. Yeah. They're starting to thump down there. Offensive lineman Andy Christensen lost his helmet. And you know, a guy that's doing a good job on this drive is the fullback, Dane Todd. He's like another lineman. Dane Todd is a is a is a 4.0 great point average fullback. And and this is this is Nebraska football that people remember being physical, pounding you between the tackles. And Nebraska wants to set the tone and, and, and establish a little nastiness, a little attitude in the running game. Saw so Brown lost his hat for Louisiana Tech on that play as well. First to 10 at the 19. Lucky pulling a couple with him. Gets down to the 13-yard line where Brandon Jackson, the Mike linebacker, and you Lake Charles, Louisiana, the stopper for the Bulldogs. You know what this gives you too when you have multiple running backs and you're on, a, on an extended drive the defense starts to get a little tired and you bring fresh legs in at the running back position that's a tough deal because you know it, not, now you've got somebody that that isn't as exhausted as you are defensively and the big offensive linemen are pounding you and in comes a new running back that's a tough deal. Nebraska 82 yards on the ground so far this half they remember they averaged 96 a game last year. Lucky sees a hole. Goodbye. Touchdown Nebraska. 13-yard TD run for Marlon Lucky, and it's Nebraska with another six, and it's 13 to three. You know when they went on that nice, uh, nice tear to finish the season in the bowl game against Michigan, they rushed for 161 yards, and that's uh, that's that was a good sign for Nebraska getting that running game going. I mentioned earlier the West Coast offense. In order for it to be successful, you have to run the football well. When we were at our at our best running that offense, we led the NFL in rushing yards a couple of years. And it's a lot easier to throw the football effectively when you're running it that well. Congdon, the sophomore from San Diego, last year hit 31 of 32 PATs. He's two of two to start 2006. As Lucky gets his first career touchdown, and the Huskers push the lead to 14 to three over Louisiana Tech. College football on FSN is presented by Kyocera Wireless. Take your texting to the next level with the Kyocera Strobe. Kyocera Wireless reminds you to dial responsibly. And brought to you by, in part by Aflac. Ask about it at work. By Dr. Pepper. 23 flavors that add up to one bold taste. Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. And by Overstock.com. Search, shop, and save up to 70% at Overstock.com. Huskers kick it off. Louisiana Tech on the return oh. and breaking it out near the 35 yard line. A 27 yard return for Weldon Brown and Louisiana Tech pretty good operating position but trailing 14 to 3. We'll be right back on FSN. All right. Thank you very much Mike as uh, it will be fun. be fun, so stay with us here. As far as halftime, we're 5.35 away on the Kyocera College Football Saturday on FSN. This is the middle game of a triple header. UCLA and Utah to follow. Champion fumbles the snap on a first and 10 for Louisiana Tech. Bulldogs down 14 to 3 to Nebraska here in Lincoln. Lance Brandenburg was right there for Nebraska. Smother champion. Yeah, you, you don't want to have those kind of mistakes. Center quarterback exchange, the simple things. Now you find yourself in, in the same situation as you if, if your quarterback was sacked or you had a tackle for loss. 
you drop the football and you give up three yards to a defense you don't want to go backwards against. Champion three of nine for 49 yards. Long has been a 35 yarder today. Passing here, second and 13. We'll find out. Yep. Got protection. And it is complete and once again to Holland. And he shows some toughness as well as elusiveness as he breaks a tackle and Grixby brings him down, but not before he picks up 17 yards. You're right, Bill. Uh, here comes Nebraska on a little blood cross with the linebackers, and it's picked up very effectively by Louisiana Tech. They bring both inside linebackers, and that gives you one on one coverage outside. And Louisiana Tech, as we said, they've got some skilled people on the perimeter. I mean, Holland is a legitimate speedster, and you have to respect his speed as a corner, and, and that's exactly what's going on for Grixby out there and, and, and champion hit him. First and 10 at the 48. And Running back Freddie Franklin wheels out of bounds after crossing midfield stripe. He's at the 49 of Nebraska where Grixby makes the tackle. Key possession for Louisiana Tech, Dave, down in the situation like they are 14 to 3 and, and realize and maybe kill some clock and get a score here. It's a whole different game. Absolutely. You have to respond. I mean, you're down two scores now. You, you want to keep this game close. You want to keep it close into the second quarter, uh, second half. Grixby's the player that's down that's being examined by the medical staff but you do you want to hang around hang around hang around the longer you hang around the more your confidence builds and that's when upsets occur you can't let Nebraska extend a two score lead they're up 11 right now you have to respond to it all right that is Grixby that is holding up the game now with his injury the earlier Dillard went down and Emily Jones with more on his condition well guys what the trainers have told me down here on the Nebraska sidelines it is a left knee injury Dillard will not return he's still being examined on the sidelines all right, thank you, Emily. And boy, the injuries uh, so often end up becoming the determining factor in a college football season. It is such a long year when everybody playing 12 games this year. In fact, Louisiana Tech will play 13. You've got to keep people healthy, depth or not. And injury, uh, knee injuries are, are crazy. I remember when Kajana Carter blew his ACL. He walked off the field, started high stepping. He has such strong quads and hamstrings. You don't know how badly you're hurting that knee. Second and seven for Champion. Overthrows Wheeler. Pressure was put on Champion as well. Here's Josh, a sophomore out of Texarkana, Texas. Seven receptions last year. He, what does he go about six ten and a half high jump? Yeah, he was a six eleven guy in high school, and he's six foot four. And you have an injury in coverage as he tried to play and come come back on the on the play. Llewellyn went down. And, 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 and Flewellen, as, as he's as he's trying to provide coverage, this field turf is just reaching up and grabbing guys. I'm telling you, on artificial turf, you won't find, you know, 17, 20-year careers in the NFL anymore. It, it, this this turf is just tough. A lot of times, you have non-contact injuries, which is going on out here now. So Flewellen, who moved over from the offensive side, and their secondary is certainly an area of concern here in Nebraska. Now, a couple of injuries. We'll be right back. 14-3 Huskers. Nebraska tending to some injuries. 52 is Dillard, and I believe that is Flewellen on the other side of him as they work things on that sideline. Meanwhile, Louisiana Tech, there's Flewellen, I beg your pardon. They got injuries all over the place, and it is third down and seven for the Bulldogs. They're on the 49 of Nebraska. Plenty of time, 3.55 to go in this first half. Zach Champion. And juggled, but ruled a completion yeah, as it is taken by Jonathan once Holland. again Jonathan Holland, brothers making the tackle. And and why not attack that spot? Llewellyn goes out. And you got to bring brothers in now. Brothers is the this is he's the second nickel player. Llewellyn's the number one nickel guy. Titus Brothers is the number two nickel guy, depending on rotation. Well, there's no Llewellyn anymore, so for the rest of the game, Titus Brothers is the nickel defensive back when Louisiana Tech goes multiple receivers and they will they're going to go three wides a ton because that's the best way for them to attack that's where their skill is three wide receivers and they're going to stay in that formation a bunch when Nebraska's struggling at corner the champion five and twelve for 73 yards on a first to ten hands it up to Freddie Franklin Franklin is tripped up well, at the 40 Gary yard line Franklin. of Nebraska Franklin a junior out of New Orleans. He ran for 448 yards last year and four scores and a 4.9 per carry mark. McEwen makes the tackle for Nebraska. And he's a very, very valuable player because of his versatility. If one of the receivers gets tired or nicked up, 
fast Freddie Franklin goes to the wide receiver position. He's got versatility. He's obviously got great hands. He's got an ability to run the football. Coaches love to have Freddie Franklin's around. Second and eight. At the 40. Champion time again. Incomplete. Intended for Wheeler. Yeah, pass intended for number 81, Josh Stops Wheeler. the clock with 2.43 to go in the half. The Brothers covering on the play. On the for the Black Wheeler trying to run a little pivot route to the sideline, and uh, it looked like the turf grabbed him. You know, as he tried to pivot out of there, he fell down and went to the turf. As it as the field turf dries up, it gets tacky. You know, it, 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 it almost gives you too much traction. Yeah, as you join us here, uh, if you haven't been with us throughout the telecast, a lot of rain this morning and showers then stop right about game time. So the turf is yet to dry out. And Nebraska suffering a number of injuries here in just the last few minutes. Third down and eight, ball on the 40. Champion going deep. And it is wow. complete. Oh, mama. Wow. Touchdown. What a play. Shanley beaten and champion delivers to who else but Jonathan Holland for 40 yards. A one-handed catch with his left hand. Blitz pickup. It started with the protection. The Nebraska Cornhuskers blitzed with the linebackers. Here come the backers and the protection's there. And you get one-on-one. -on -one. Look at this left-handed, one-handed catch. That is sweet sugar. Unbelievable to control the football with the left hand and bring it into the body. Big time, big play. And that's what Louisiana Tech wanted. A big play or two to keep him in the hunt. And Harwoodell with the point after attempt. And it and is good. good. So Louisiana Tech, they got a field goal earlier. They get the touchdown on a 40-yard play. Champion to Holland with a sensational grab. Great throw, better catch. And boy, look at the concentration on Holland. I mean, Holland, champion says, I got it out there. Can he do it? I mean, I, I don't think I could overthrow Holland, can I? I mean, this guy's faster than lightning. <laughs> and, and Holland outran the football. He literally outran the football, extended that left hand, and made just a miraculous catch. And then tiptoed the sideline. I mean, as soon as he caught the ball, he got his eyes right to the sideline, knowing how he had to keep his feet in bounds to get inside the pylon for the touchdown. Boy, a gold star on the forehead of Holland and a big, big assist to champion, giving him an opportunity out there. Yeah, would it surprise you to know that Holland was the WAC indoor 60-meter champion? Boy, it, the blitz pickup, you can see it here, giving him protection. And boy, just a perfect ball. And, and Holland, you can't say enough. And of course, he hurdles the uh, hurdles the the barrier into the stands, into the seats. A little celebration, boy, that is something else. And Champion gets his first career touchdown pass. The Super 8 scoring drive for Louisiana Tech, eight plays, 67 yards. Required just 309. If there's a negative, it's that Nebraska gets the ball back. If you're Louisiana Tech with 236 to go, and if. Uh, the Huskers uh, needed to be slapped around a little bit. That certainly ought to have gotten their attention. Well, we were talking about the Huskers had a two-score lead. They were up 11. Louisiana Tech had to answer. And how would they answer? Well, they certainly answered. Boy, champion to Holland was a, was a big-time answer. And now with the injuries that Nebraska has at cornerback, that is what Louisiana Tech is going to do over and over again. If the protection stays solid, picking up the blitz, they're going to have those receivers isolated one-on-one -on -one out in the perimeter. Green and Wilson deep as Horwadell with the short kick. And the ball is smothered by Nebraska. And the ball, the clock, remember, starting the moment the ball is kicked and the clock running. And they call a. Brandenburg fell on it. Recovered the football. And they stop it here at 231. First down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Search, shop, and save up to 70% at Overstock.com. Now they start that clock again as soon as they feel the ball ready to play for the officials. And Nebraska will operate. Taylor will play action and then dumps it off to Marlon Lucky. Lucky. Close to a first Taylor down. We'll see where they mark it. Let's drop it down now to Emily Jones. More on those injuries. Well, guys, you talked about those Nebraska injuries. It looks like Courtney Grixby is suffering from a right shoulder injury. However, he will return to the game. Meantime, though, Isaiah Fluellen will not return. He's got a left knee injury. Mm, thanks, Boy. Emily. Fluellen and Dillard out for the day, and Grixby to return. Taylor hit as he fires, and it is complete. 
at the 34-yard line. Taylor's pass complete to number eight. Terrence Nunn made the catch. Did a good job of securing the football as he was going to the turf. Hampton covering that time for the Bulldogs. The hurry up for down, Nebraska. 146 and line. counting here for a second and six from the 36. Taylor, good protection. Overthrows none. Now you find yourself in a third and must situation. Uh, right now you don't want to give the ball back to Louisiana Tech, even though there's only a minute and 39 seconds to play. You want to go down the football field yourself offensively and at least put a field goal on the board and go up by a touchdown. You're, you're you know, you're not even you're, a field goal. You're better than a field goal lead, but a touchdown, you're in trouble. Yeah, but, you get in a hurry up, and then you say, well, wait a minute. We don't get the first down here. We're in trouble. Taylor to throw. And Herrion wow. dodges a man. They got the first down, and Herrion, who scored a TD earlier, takes it down to the 40. Seven yard line where Antonio Baker makes the tackle after a 20 yard game. Well, Harry and gave a little dipsy do to Mark Hillard. Watch, watch Dillard right here. And here come, here he comes, trying to make the tackle. Whoops, uh oh, a little laundry left on the field. And Matt Harrion's down the football field for some extra yards after catch, showing a nice ability to change direction. Arian, second team all conference in 03 and 04, even though 04 he only played in eight games when he suffered that broken leg and then missed all of last year and came back through the spring and summer. Ball start, 50 offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Now you have a deal with the, with the center, and, and he's a good one. Kurt Mann, double clutch. You know, you can't start a snap and then stop it. He forgot the snap count and started to move the football before the. He started oh, a move. He's yes. a graduate with a 3.98 GPA. He didn't forget anything. Somebody else had to screw up, right? <laughs> Couldn't have been his fault. This guy is something else. Taylor dumps it over the middle to Nunn. And Nunn rolls to the out-of-bounds marker at the 35-yard line. And Nebraska back in business. 109 to go. 17-yard pickup. Baker there to force him out. Doing a nice job is Nebraska of clearing out the intermediate areas with receivers and then, and then and doing shallow crosses to take advantage of the voided spot. Good scheme, good execution by Zach Taylor, a good call on the by offense coordinator Jay Norvell. Five different receivers have caught from Zach Taylor so far today. Taylor seven of 14 for 104. Firing deep in the flag throw. It is complete inside the five yard line. And on the reception is Nate Swift before Dillard wrestles him down. A 30-yard pickup if it will stand. Well, this is uh, what, what Coach Callahan was talking about, playing clean. And, and we had we have had a touchdown run negated by, by a holding penalty. This one by a personal foul penalty. Let's take a look and see what right here you have. You have Kurt Mann jacking up the face mask in the interior of Joshua Muse, the big nose guard who's the best player for that defense. Josh Muse, the lifter of the year. Look at this, almost ripping that helmet off. Kurt Mann and Josh Muse, man, you gotta, that, that, one, that one's gotta be called, that's illegal. It's hand-to-hand -hand combat, but you, you, have to, you can't get up in the headgear. You have to protect against those neck injuries. Well, he's had, uh, Kurt Mann has had Back-to-back -back penalties, basically, are three, two penalties and three snaps where he had the uh, fake in the start of the play with a false start, and then he had the personal foul. So he's cost his offense 20 yards in three snaps, and that one was more than 20 because the ball, the play ended up inside the 10-yard line. So basically, that's about a 40-yard penalty right there. And Nebraska, last year, zero penalties in their season opener. This year, they've had four already here in this first half, and they had Wilson's touchdown run called back, and they did not recover from that. Right. And now they've got 101 to try to see if they can get back down into scoring territory. They're at the 49 of Louisiana Tech, where it's first and 25 for Taylor and crew. He goes right to work and dishes it out on the wing to France Hardy, the junior out of Miami, Florida. Anthony Moss covering. They pick up 11, and it will be a second down and 14 from the 38-yard line. The two biggest plays that Nebraska has generated offensively have been negated by penalty. And now they're going back to the uh, to the out patterns, working the sideline, trying to sa save timeouts and work the clock by getting out of bounds. They have two timeouts, or they have three timeouts remaining. Louisiana Tech has two. 
Second and 14. Taylor. And again, well done that time on the reception is Todd Peterson, sophomore from Grand Island, Nebraska, gets his first reception of the season. Moss covering 12 yards on the pickup. And Todd Peterson presents a matchup problem with his six foot four inch body. I mean, he's a big, tall, lanky, long bodied guy. And if, if Louisiana Tech is going to continue to give the cushion at the cornerback position, they're going to take those, you know, out patterns and just nickel and dime the ball down the field. None wide right. Harry and tight on the right side. Taylor gives to Lucky. Lucky looks for a hole and bursts to the 21 inside that. Bill Callahan calls a timeout for the sideline. His first timeout. And coaches can do that. The officials will acknowledge the coaches on the sideline calling the T.O. Nebraska has self-destructed a little bit, Bill. Like you just said a little while ago, I mean, they, were two, they had a touchdown called back by holding. And then they were first in goal on a pass play that was called back by a personal foul when man got his, face, his hands up to the face mask and, and, uh, of Joshua Muse, and that one was negated. So they're going to have to stop beating themselves. Jack McNell, the head coach of Louisiana Tech, just hoping his club can stiffen enough to force a field goal attempt by Nebraska, and it would be a heck of a half for Louisiana Tech as this is the start of a meat grinder for Louisiana Tech as they've also got to go to Texas A&M and Clemson before they open up Black Plagans Boise State. Hey, tomorrow, college football special on FSM presented by Dr. Peppers. The 21st ranked TCU Horn Frogs will take on the Baylor Bears. Showdown between in-state rivals. Coverage begins at 5.30 Eastern, 2.30 Pacific, only on FSM. My partner, Dave Lapham, headed down to the Lone Star State after this one. Join Joel Myers and Jim Knox for that one as Joel and Gary Reasons and Noxie today were in Austin where Texas hammered University of North Texas in the first game of our Kyocera College Football Saturday triple header. Right here, it's Louisiana Tech on the short side, 14-10. See what Taylor's done on this drive. And then don't forget later on, UCLA and Utah will complete our first day of college football coverage here on FSN. 43 seconds to go in the half, first and 10, ball on the 21. Taylor. Complete slip. And he is stopped inside the 10, down to the nine yard line. A 12-yard gain for the Huskers. Jackson there for Louisiana Tech. Coming up at halftime, Mike Goldberg, Billy Ray Smith, and DeMarco Farr. We'll have it all for you. Top 25 scores and highlights. And a preview. Ohio State and Texas coming up next week. Part two. What a game last year when Texas won on, a, on just a tremendous play by Vince Young. Taylor in the end zone. Knocked down, nearly intercepted by the Bulldogs. Boy, you know, Taylor showed his courage right there, standing in the pocket until until the very last second. But boy, it, it almost uh, almost made a poor decision. He feels it coming. Here's the hit, lowers the shoulder pad, and just I mean, cuts him almost right in half. That's beverage. And and Zach Taylor throws into a crowd trying to hit Matt Harrion. The ball is tipped. He's very fortunate that was not a turnover because that wasn't one of his best uh, decisions. He showed tremendous courage as Beveridge was closing in on him. Yeah, Harris is the one that had the shot at the interception. So Louisiana Tech trying to answer defensively. 19 seconds remaining. Remember, Nebraska still a couple of timeouts to go first. And they're at the 14. Taylor got all day. Also got Swift. He cuts it up. He is short. Boy, he put a move on Des Abrams that was uh, phenomenal in, in the open field. 11 seconds to go. Swift on the play, 13 yards. Watch the, watch the move that he makes after the reception on, on, the, on the shallow cross here. Here comes, whoop, whoop, down we go. I mean, that's, that's just an incredible effort. Abrams can't keep up with it. He, he gets him in his sights, takes him to the sideline, plants, cuts, Abrams whoop, slips out of there goes down to the turf. He almost took it to the house. He was trying to turn it upfield and get his shoulder pad squared up to get it over the goal line. Could not quite get it done. And you've heard about Nebraska's injuries. Now Louisiana Tech with Mark Dillard, who was their leading rusher last year, is on the defensive side of things this year. And he is being helped up. That's what he did last year as a running back. Moved over to the defensive side of things. 
Dillard, a junior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He's okay. He just uh, got something wrong. I think the way the way he's going off the field, uh, did he get poked? Yeah, he's grabbing that left eye like he get poked in the eye. So he'll be he'll be back in the fray. He's going to have to leave for a snap because medical atten medical attention came out in the field. He's going to have to go off to the sideline for one play, but he can return immediately thereafter. All right, Nebraska second down at the one yard line. Second and goal, but 11 seconds remaining in this first half. And it's a 14 10 Nebraska lead. Trying to add to it. Glenn, the ball carries. Glenn is in for the touchdown. Cody Glenn, a sophomore from Rusk, Texas. Six feet, 230 pounds. He's the uh, the downhill guy. That's a, that's a nice body to have at the running back position, short yardage and goal line. Low center of gravity. He's going to follow his fullback, his lead blocker. He gets the help, the lead block, and then he runs through a couple of tackles. That's just a big, powerful human being right there that uh, Deion Young can't control, as well as Des Abrams. Seven carries, 22 yards. His first touchdown had four year ago. Here is Jordan Congdon for the point after. And he punches it through. So the Huskers answer that tech touchdown. And it's now 21 to 10. Nebraska by 11. With just seven seconds remaining in the half, there is Glenn. Well, well two things you got to like about this drive. Like you mentioned, uh, Bill, they responded to Louisiana Tech's big play. And number two, they responded to their self destruction. I mean, they have, they're, they're at first and goal with a big play and it's nullified by penalty and they keep their nose to the grindstone and keep getting after it and, and score a touchdown anyway. That's a good sign to overcome that type of, uh, you know, a, a, a little bit of adversity. They said the heck with it. We're still going to punch this thing in the end zone and build ourselves to a two score lead. Huskers coming off an eight and four campaign last year, four and four in the Big 12. And they've been picked by most to win the North Iowa State is the other chief contender, the Cyclones close calls the last two years and have not gotten to that championship game they had a close call in their opener the other night against Toledo before winning in a triple overtime Bill Callahan says yes this is our best team should be a lot of enthusiasm here in Lincoln but they have certainly gotten a tussle on their hands from Louisiana Tech in this first half here today well different ways to approach it Louisiana Tech goes long distance with a big play and then Nebraska comes back and goes on an 11 play drive ball control eating the clock up that's one way to keep an explosive big play offense off the board is keep them on the sideline and just uh, control the clock with your offense. Here's a kickoff, seven seconds. Remember, the clock starts the moment the ball is touched on the kickoff. This will be it. And Louisiana Tech trying to break it and nothing doing for Jackson on the play as Patrick just wrestled down near the 28 yard line and that'll end our first half of the season opener Nebraska and the Husker faithful support him with a record crowd on hand and it's 21 to 10 Huskers here in this first half over Louisiana Tech Tech shut out in the first quarter got 10 in the second period and it's now a 21 10 game here as they head to the locker room for the halftime break. Let's send it down to Emily Jones with head coach Bill Callahan of the Huskers. Coach Callahan, you're up 21 to 10. It could be a lot more. You guys have shot yourselves in the foot a little bit. Somewhat. You know, I, I thought that we, we gave up a cheap penalty down on the one score, but I thought we responded well. Our kids got good focus. As long as we can clean up a couple minor penalties, we'll be in good shape. You said all week in this West Coast offense, you guys were going to pound the ball. You averaged 96 yards a game last season. You've already got 100. Well, we're trying to establish the run. Uh, I think our linemen are doing an excellent job and just got to keep maintaining the consistency of what we're trying to get establisher. All right, coach, best of luck in the second half. All right, guys, it is 21 to 10 Nebraska over Louisiana Tech. We'll have the second half coming up in a little bit. First, it's time to kick it to our boys in L.A. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. Kia Saris College Football Saturday as the Huskers lead the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech 21-10. Bill Land, along with Dave Lapham here at the break. 
impressive first half in some ways for both ball clubs. Yeah, I think both of them really played as well as they possibly could. Did Nebraska self-destruct a couple of times? Yeah, they did. Uh, Louisiana Tech, I thought very early in the football game when they had a sudden change, they, they fumbled a punt and immediately got the ball back through their offense. I thought that was a telling tale that they're not going to quit in this football game. I think it's going to be a good one down the stretch. Let's take a look now at our direct TV stats in the first half, and you will see Nebraska has the edge there, although Louisiana Tech has been able to move the football and have some success as well. Absolutely. I, I think uh, third down conversions is a big thing. I mean, you have Louisiana Tech converting at 50%. And Nebraska is converting at 75% uh, also on the red zone. Nebraska has been there four times and scored three touchdowns. But, you know, it, it, it's a, uh, Lucky is averaging six yards a carry. Patrick, is, uh, Patrick Jackson is averaging five and a half for Louisiana Tech. Jonathan Holland is the story of the first half. Wide receiver for Louisiana Tech. Five catches for 112 yards and a touchdown. That magnificent one-handed 39-yard touchdown reception was the play of the game at this point in time. And Bill would like to see a little bit of more of that. Big plays by both teams in the second half. All right, thank you, Dave. As we take a look at those numbers, 271-151. Nebraska with the edge there. Emily Jones had a chance to catch up with Jack Bicknell, the head coach of Louisiana Tech. Coach, you're down 11. It could have been a lot closer had you not given up that drive at the end of the second quarter. Your thoughts on the first half? Well, our guys are playing hard. That was a tough one. We almost had an interception there at the end. That was tough. But uh, our guys are playing extremely hard. We believe we can play with them. And, uh, you know, we've just got to have a good second half. The key is going to be defensively we can stop them. Uh, if we can't stop them, obviously we're going to be in trouble. We can't let them just jam it down our throat. What would you tell your team at the break? I just told them, look, guys, we're right in this game. I said, you know, we can play with these guys, obviously. And I said, just keep playing hard. Don't worry about the scoreboard. Let's just keep playing and keep coming at them. All right, Coach, best of luck in the second half. All right, thank you very much, Emily, as uh, Brandenburg takes care of the kickoff, and its 28-yard line is the official line of scrimmage for the first and 10 for Zach Taylor and the Huskers. And with that clock starting, we'll see people, I think, start their offense a little bit quicker as the season moves on, won't you, Dave? I think they're going to come from the sideline with a play. I agree, Bill, and maybe a couple of plays from the sideline. And... The first play comes off to Cody Glenn. And he is stopped by West Day, the sophomore from Shreveport, Louisiana. Take a look at where Nebraska was successful running the football in the first half. Didn't get much done going to their left. They creased him a little bit up the middle for 78 yards and, uh, and 23 yards to the right. So between the tackles is where they did the most damage to Louisiana Tech. Huskers here, second and seven on the 31. Play action. Taylor, a wide open Harrion, 50, 45, and brought down inside the 40-yard line as Matt Harrion. Collins makes the tackle for the Bulldogs, a 33-yard gain for Nebraska. That's his third catch for 63 yards. That's pretty tough, averaging 21 yards per catch. He has a touchdown pass of 17 yards. Got to love Matt Harrion. An easy guy to root for. Somebody that just would not give up, would not quit, even after having a compound fracture of the leg. Matt Herrion is back. Matt Herrion is able to run freely without a limp. I mean, it's great to see. First and 10 at the 38 officially. Taylor has all day. Still standing strong. And a wide open swift inside the 20. And he rambles down to the 17-yard line where Moss makes the tackle. A 21-yard pickup. Taylor just passing Jamal Lord, number seven, on the all-time Nebraska passing list. Kind of tells you about their passing game in past years, where a guy who has played one season and half a game right. is already number seven all-time. Absolutely. Running that West Coast offense, you're going to rack up some numbers. And obviously, Bill Callahan saying, OK, Louisiana Tech's crowd in the line of scrimmage to stop our run we established in the first half. Let's open it up. And they have. And a third one to Terrence Nunn. And he receives the football near the 13-yard line before Moss brings him down on the play. And the Huskers coming out strong to start the second half. Both teams very balanced in their play selection in the first half. Tech ran the ball 15 times, threw it 14. Nebraska ran it 22 times, threw it 19. Very, very balanced in their play selection. But coming out in the second half, Coach Callahan said, let's throw the pig. Second down and four. Marlon Lucky. 
inside the six where Collins makes the tackle. This would be a big statement for Nebraska to score a touchdown right before the half to increase the lead to two scores to come out and have a possession immediately to start the second half. And here they are inside the 10 yard line. If they score another touchdown and score right at the end of the first half and the first possession of the second half, that would be a huge statement for them. See Marlon Lucky and what he's done in the ground game so far today. And well as out of the backfield. Now here is Taylor. Got a man over. Touchdown Nebraska. As the Huskers roll, J.B. Phillips with a reception. The junior from Collinville, Texas, on a six-yard TD reception. Well, Matt Herrien has caught a touchdown pass at tight end. Why not involve J.B. Phillips, another big-body guy, 6'3", 245-pounder. Did a nice job. And boy, Zach Taylor standing in there knowing he's going to get lit up. Louisiana Tech has broken down in coverage. There's no question about it. The tight ends have been uh, lonesome soldiers out there in the secondary, patrolling it without any any problem at all. And the, and the point after attempt is good by Condon. Big 12 football on FSN is brought to you part by Dr. Pepper. College football on FSN is presented by Kia Sarah, the new value frontier. And brought to you in part by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. By Dr. Pepper. 23 flavors that add up to one bold taste. Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. And by Overstock.com. Search, shop, and save up to 70% at Overstock.com. Well, the Huskers take just 229 off the board to start the second half and bang into the end zone on the TD pass to Phillips. And it's kicked off to Louisiana Tech. Weldon Brown corralled inside the 15 and knocked around. And Brown is brought down inside the 16, a 10 yard return. And Nebraska getting the tackle of Brandon Ragoni, a former walk on, now scholarshipper and captain. He's the missile. Yep, he's the guy. He's the he, he's a free safety, but what he does is this. He's not going to make a whole lot of a whole lot of plays on at the line of scrimmage as safety, but he is a kamikaze covering kicks. See? Let's check in See? with Emily Jones. Well guys, he's 5'6, 185 pounds. He grew up coming to Nebraska games with his fathers. He used to sit in the north end zone, 10 rows from the top. Now his parents. Sounds like Rudy, doesn't it? It's like a Rudy movie. Fire snap, ball start, 63 offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Yeah, but some people tell me, hey, this guy can play. Nothing against Rudy. No, he can he can definitely play. But it, it's a it's a good story. There's no doubt about it. Instead of Rudy, Rudy, it should be Brandon, Brandon. That'd be great here. And his parents are going, hey, we went from the cheap seats. We're down to 50 now. That's this right. is all right, kid. Way to go. Nice comps. Yeah, it's saving him some money with that scholarship. All right, La Tech needs it. a big series here. This record setting crowd roaring, and a flag is thrown. Well, they're trying to change plays at the line of scrimmage, and they're. First snap, first start, 89 offense, five yard penalty. It was something they said they probably wouldn't do much of today. Yeah, I think uh, Nebraska is, is making some adjustments defensively, and, and, and you have a deal where they have to make some changes at the line of scrimmage. And Anthony James, he, he rolled uh, forward a little bit in his stance as he was trying to listen in to what the change, change in play was. Well, crowd screaming again. It's first and 20. The ball backed up on the six. Watch out. And Champion unloads it. He had a man in his Carriker. face, and it was Carriker. Boy, nothing new there. This, you know, Adam Carriker was a high school quarterback, and he it was quarterback for an 0-9 football team, and he was always running for his life. So he wants to make quarterbacks do this, run for their life, and Carriker can get after it. 6'6", 295 pounds, tremendously athletic. There's a defensive MVP last year, first team all-conference pick in the Big 12, and a preseason All-America selection this year. Character has that defense rocking in the crowd as well. Second down and 20 ball at the six yard line. 
champion on the one to receive the snap. Hands it off quickly, and nice play as Nebraska gets the run out across, or the Louisiana Tech out across the 20 to the 21 yard line for Freddie Franklin, a 15 yard pickup. Stuart Bradley lost his outside contain a little bit. He got uh, sucked up inside, and, it, and now it's the third makeable. That's a good call. Bradley loses the, uh, loses the contain, and now you're in a situation where you can convert. Draws and screens when you're expecting a, a, a fierce pressure package is an outstanding call. Andre Jones in on the play. Third and five for the Bulldogs. Champion to Franklin, one on one, dives for the first down, and champion. Nice play that time as he was trying to take and beat Baru. Yeah, you have running back on linebacker, and, and this should favor the running back. Here's the motion. Watch the back come out of the backfield, and, and Bo Root's got him. He tries to take the angle, intersect it. And Franklin's a little bit faster than Bo Root gave him credit for, and once he gets to the corner, he's able to stretch the ball out past the first down marker. So that was significant for Louisiana Tech to be backed up on their six-yard line and get a first down. And here is Franklin again. If nothing else, Dave, give their defense a chance to just adjust a little bit after Nebraska hit four straight passes for a TD out of the break. Absolutely, and uh, you know to punch themselves out of the bad field position they had with uh, the crowd noise causing them some penalty problems. And, you know they're a resilient group. I mean, and, and uh, you have a, you have Zach Champion who's who's not the least bit overwhelmed. I mean, this, the game has not been too big for him. He stayed in the pocket well. He's been protected. His back's done a great job of blitz pickup against the linebackers blitzing. It's a guy who threw two passes last season. And on the ground again, on a second and three, McEwen is there to stop the play. It'll be third and around a yard. We'll see where they measure it here. Third and two, it looks like at the 36-yard line now for Louisiana Tech. 934 and counting here in this third quarter. Alaska led an intermission 21 10 tacked on a TD Taylor a pass to Phillips to come out of the locker room roaring in their defense created some havoc now Louisiana Tech trying to get a little more stability big third and two at the 36 champion fakes in the handoff in trouble throws it away. In his face, Jay Moore. Yeah, the naked bootleg uh, fooled no one. There's a penalty flag. Let's see what this call is. Huge call right here. If it's against Nebraska, it's a first down for Louisiana Tech. Holding against Louisiana Tech will be declined. I would think. I don't think they think Jack McNell would go for it with this field position on fourth and short. 51 on the offense. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. So they will indeed kick it away here on fourth down. The champion comes off. And Cagle, Chris Cagle, the sophomore from Baton Rouge, will come on to kick it away. Terrence Nunn, the lone deep man for Nebraska. Heck of a kick. Inside the 20 drop the football. And a scramble for it. Huskers indicate they've got it. Louisiana Tech saying the same thing. It's a tug of war right now. Strong forearms, wrists, and hands win. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing from the officials yet. It's Nebraska football. It is Nebraska football. Wow, 46-yard kick and Things got a little quiet here at <laughs> Memorial Stadium. Huskers lead it 28 to 10. Now let's take a look at our AFLAC trivia question here in Lincoln, Nebraska. How about it? Who are the five coaches to take a college job after guiding a team to the Super Bowl? There's one hint. Yeah. All right. Right. Okay. Bill <laughs> Callahan, of course, doing that with the Oakland Raiders. There's four others mull it over as Nebraska gets the football after a fumble on the punt return and they keep it on the ground here. They were impressive in that first half of the ground game with 
over 100 yards rushing, and then they took to the air to start the second. Wilson with a carry here, and he picks up five before he stopped by Mark Diller. And the last five possessions, here's what Nebraska's done with them. Boy, uh, how about the uh, the last four of them have been outstanding? Eight play drive, 12 play drive, 11 and six, all for touchdowns, and that's ball control right there. Peterson, the man in motion. Taylor, come oh, on. Wow. Oh, Swift. Oh. <laughs> he was too open. Nobody within five yards of him, and Swift couldn't find the handle. You know, as you look at the shadows, the way they're being cast, as you look back, I wonder how soon he found the football. The sun is on that particular angle. Don't want to make excuses for him, but boy, this, this is one that you got to make a play on. He adjusted to the ball and put his head right down to it. You just got to squeeze it a little bit more, and that uh, he makes a move after that catch. You don't know what you're looking at. Another, another opportunity not taken full advantage of by Nebraska. They've had big plays nullified, including a touchdown by penalty, but that was just a drop. Here's Taylor again firing, and this one incomplete, going for none. None, Swift, and Harrion have three receptions each. Hampton was covering on that play. Zach Taylor's already thrown for 234 yards now, and a pair of touchdowns, one interception here today. It's unfortunate that uh, Nebraska now has to has to punt the football away. Louisiana Tech gets a one, two, three, and out. And it was a fortunate one, two, three, and out because they had another blown coverage, and uh, Swift bailed them out by dropping the football. They're getting the, the things they want to have done by their formation and motion and all those things, confusing the secondary. Guys are starting to run wide open, which was George Darlington's biggest fear. Freddie Franklin deep. Titchener stands on a six, boots it away for the Huskers. Franklin going back, 30, 27 yard line for the catch. Got by one, saw a little seam, 35, and sticks his head down and goes across the 40 yard line. Nice return that time by Franklin Kick after a 52 yard boot. He picks up 12 on the return, and the tackle made by McEwen. Aflac trivia question about college coaches. After guiding a team to the Super Bowl, Bill Callahan has won. Yeah, it did. I, I ultimately you got, got the, the toughest one today as you yeah. tested on this. Yeah, the, the last one was uh, was I'm one fine. that uh, I, I forgot about actually, but Bobby Ross at Army. That was the one that I. It took me the longest. George Allen. Uh, that was that was one that got a little difficult. Bill Walsh, Forrest Gregg, I knew about because he coached uh, the Super Bowl team that I was part of. Of course, went to SMU. And Allen going to Long Beach State, trying to go to the house here is the deep ball, and it's nearly picked off as they're trying for Holland. And Andre Jones is the one that had the best opportunity in. In the first half, Zach Champion was 6 of 14 for 112 yards and a touchdown. Holland caught five of those six. He had all the yards and he had the touchdown. Patrick Jackson caught a ball out of the backfield for no gain. So it was basically the champion to Holland show in the first half by air. Last time La Tech, Louisiana Tech, rather, was here, Troy Edwards set an NCAA record with 21 receptions, 405 yards receiving, and a loss to the Huskers. And three touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of the most bizarre stat games for a team that took a thorough whipping, 56 to 27. And Tim Bertay was unbelievably impressive. He was 46 of 68 for 590 yards and four touchdowns. That's crazy. And you get whipped. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Louisiana Tech third and ten. Ball on the 40 of the Bulldogs. And they send Holland and Newman wide left here. Let's see if the Huskers come after him. 6.43 to go in the third quarter. Champion. Here they come. He unloads the football before being dragged down. Barry Turner was in his face. Had a hold of him. Jack take, McNell scratching the head after that one. Take a look at the stunts inside, the crossing action. They run double TE stunts, and, and, and they one gets home. And all they did was rush four, but they twisted them up front. Barry Turner got there and put the pressure on him. You can rush four and drop seven into coverage. Tough on a quarterback. High snap. Oh. Nearly blocked. Kago gets it off. And it's taken by Nunn. He fields this one all right. And he is smothered at the 27-yard line. A break on Kiyosara's College Football Saturday after 34-yard punt. Huskers 28, Louisiana Tech 10.
to you by Kyocera. It is 28 to 10, Nebraska on top here in Lincoln. And we are joined by the Cornhuskers' new head basketball coach, Doc Sadler. Uh, what's it like being in Lincoln? Is, your, is this your first football game? It's unbelievable. As you know, Emily, there's not a better place in college football than being here on a Saturday afternoon. The sun shines out. The fans are great. We're winning, so what more could you ask for? Now, a lot of people might say, why would you want to come to Nebraska? This is clearly a football school. Well, because football is what gives us all the opportunities that we have here. Obviously, uh, our athletes are taken better, uh, better care of than anybody in the country. And it's because there's 80,000 people here today. So I love football, and uh, we just need to get a little bit of this energy in the, in the Devaney Center. Uh, the expansion here has made these facilities second to none, and that it spills over, as you mentioned, to you guys. No no question about it. We're fixing to start at the Devaney Center and, re and completely redo it. So a lot of great things are happening here. We just got to do our part as a basketball staff to get to get the college basketball team uh, close to what they've got here in football. You come to Nebraska by way of UTEP, and you've also got some Big 12 ties. Coached at Texas Tech for a brief stint in the early 90s. Got some great friends. Obviously, I work with Billy Gillespie. Uh, Bill Self's a very good friend of mine. Sean Sutton, I used to babysit when he was growing up. So we're going to have a lot of fun competing against each other, and uh, hopefully we'll win our share of games. You should be able to get some dirt on Sean by the babysitting, right? <laughs> well, if we need it, I, I, if we need it and it's a close ball game, I'll tell the referees what we need to do. All right, Doc Sadler, the new men's basketball coach here at Nebraska. Best of luck this season. We do appreciate it. Right, Emily, Guys, back up to you. All right, thank you, Emily. Best of luck to Doc Sadler Taylor coming in here from UTEP. Mueller makes the reception on that pass from Taylor for the Husky with 5.04 to go in the quarter. Hampton making the tackle. Coach said look old enough to have babysat Sean Sutton. That's right. He's, he's, he's looking good. Yeah. Nice job down there with UTEP when he took over for Billy Gillespie. And got a lot of friends that won't be so friendly when they get to go into That's basketball right. action in the Big 12. Time to compete then. The Huskers with a 28 to 10 lead. Second and six ball on the 47. None the man in motion. They fake to him and instead hand it off up the middle. And that is Kenny Wilson well, as he stopped at midfield. Wilson. Well, we talked about the facilities and Emily visiting with Doc Sadler. They have added a brand new right locker room underneath the stands at the opposite end. We had a chance to tour this yesterday, Dave. Just absolutely incredible. The uh, new indoor facility, the Tom and Nancy Osborne Sports Complex, that offers more than just football, the opportunity to work on there. The training room facility, the medical setup with x-ray machines. They've got a room for nothing but knee braces in this place. It's amazing. Uh, just absolutely top shelf as they continue to make bigger and better here at Nebraska. None on the reception, and it's a first down as he rolls out of bounds at the 39 of the Bulldogs. Taking out of bounds on number 35. Yeah, and let's not forget about four million for that Brand new Husker Vision board up here that is 117 feet wide. I could watch my hotel last night yeah. about three and a half blocks down the road. Zach Taylor can uh, take a look at the replay and as uh, as the replay unfolds on the big screen. It's uh, it's an, that's the biggest screen TV screen in the state of Nebraska, maybe in the in this geography. Yeah, now you got to go down to Texas. Godzillatron, as they've called it in Austin, is a slightly bigger one down there that folks saw earlier today on FSM. But Texas taking care of. University of North Texas. Macbeth makes the tackle here. And it'll be a second down coming up for the Huskers. And seven at the 36 yard line. And the crowd today, because of the expansion where they added 6,500 seats in that end zone and another row of suites, 81,206 is the expansion accommodation. And the new record crowd here today, 85,000 officially, 181. <laughs> the official attendance here today. Taylor got time going to oh, oh it's nearly picked off by Hampton. Under threw him. Had him and didn't put enough air into the ball. Another thing Nebraska's doing a pretty good job of with Zach Taylor is changing the launch point. Sometimes they have him in pocket, sometimes they're getting him out of pocket. Little play action here where he just drops straight back into the pocket and delivers and just did not quite get enough underneath the Air underneath the ball and got smoked as he delivered it, and uh, that's been uh, that's been happening to him here a little bit today. He is a, a courageous guy in the pocket. He knows it's coming. He stands in there to the bitter end. Got sacked 36 times last year. You talk about toughness. Harris got him that time, but he got rid of it. Now this one is complete to Todd Peterson. That'll move the chains. Picks up 17 yards, and Peterson gets the first down for Nebraska. Zach Taylor. The story, of course, went to Wake Forest. 
just didn't fit with the Butler County Junior College in Kansas and then came up here and lit him up last year and starting off strong today. And that's the ninth different receiver that he's gone to and, and that's his job in the West Coast offense is to execute and distribute. And he's attacked all quadrants of the football field with multiple people. Play action. Oh, got him. Dumps it off and it is complete to Phillips who scored a touchdown earlier. He is tackled to the 15 by Moss. Todd Peterson came off the line of scrimmage open real early. But Zach Taylor couldn't pull the trigger on it and had to check down. Yeah, that's that's the what one. the crowd saw. It? Yeah, the crowd kind of uh, reacted to to just coming off the Todd Peterson coming off the line of scrimmage pretty cleanly. Husker passing, you know what it was with Tom Osborne and of course Frank Soldich continued solely pretty much with the ground game. Bill Callahan, whole different percentage with the West Coast offense. But having said that, he's very adamant that their running game has to improve this year. And you've noticed today they keep coming back to that ground game. This time Kenny Wilson. Well, as you mentioned, in the first half, his play selection was very balanced. Ran it 22 times, threw it 19. And, you know, in a perfect world, you want to try to get 50-50. You know, not necessarily in yards, but play selection. That's the thing that they got in the bowl game against Michigan. They were, they were extremely balanced offensively. They had, uh, I think it was 318 yards in that game, and 161 of them were on the ground. And a timeout is called here. As Nebraska will take a breather and we will as well. 137 to go in the third quarter. Huskers lead at 28 10. Knock it on the door again here in Lincoln. Nebraska <laughs> touchdown on the play as we come back. No, he was out of bounds, out of the end zone as Zach Taylor trying to connect with France Hardy. Welcome back to Sarah's College Football Saturday. Moss was covering on the play as Taylor was forced to scramble. Well this one uh, this one is is one that uh, Hardy would like to have back. Here he is in the top working working works his way to the back corner of the end zone drops the football and he juggles the ball in the back corner. Doesn't have complete possession. You have to have possession of the ball, total possession of the ball, and one foot in bounds. And he was juggling it as he backed out of the end zone. Fourth down and two. They will go for it here. The ball on the nine yard line. And the pitch. Wilson to the five, running hard. And Wilson brought down near the three yard line by Quinn Harris. It's a junior out of Liberal, Kansas. Another Butler County Junior College fella. That last year ran for nearly 1,300 yards and 14 scores. Well, he comes out of piles now. Wilson will uh, will go into a pile and always come out the other side. He's got 4-4 speed on that big, strong body. I can understand why they like him. Six feet, 220 pounds with that kind of speed. He's only been here for a month. He's only experienced about 20 practices. He really doesn't know what he doesn't know yet with this West Coast offense. As he develops, he's going to be big. Man. First and goal from the two. Louisiana Tech reads it and drops him for a loss as Wilson stopped at the five. That was good penetration uh, coming downhill. Antonio Baker in the goal line defense. That safety, the unblocked safety, just comes downhill and just in, and makes a big hit. Nice job. Muse coming in there as well. Muse had him low, yeah. Yeah. So second and goal from the five now. 37 seconds to go, third quarter. Huskers trying to. Get another six. Wilson wrapped up hard, lost the football, oh. and Louisiana Tech has recovered. The Huskers turn it over, and Louisiana Tech, the partner was just saying during the break, Nebraska punches this one in. It could be a long fourth quarter. Right. Louisiana Tech is not so quick, huh? I'm telling you, they, they've responded. Uh, this is their second takeaway. They had the deflected interception after. Uh, after they had fumbled a kickoff, a, a, a punt return. Now you have to, you have to ball security. I mean, is his forward progress done? It's just punched out of there. Just reached in and punched out of there. Weldon Brown. Brown got the recovery. I think Harris got the knockout on it. And Louisiana Tech is going to get possession of the football at the 11-yard line. The quarter is going to close. Yep, that's seconds ticking down. So we've played three here in Lincoln. 
In front of a record crowd at Memorial Stadium and Bill Callahan's Huskers have the lead 28 to 10. They've made some critical mistakes though. They could have this one under complete control had they not. The Osiris College Football Saturday continues in just a moment. You're watching it all on FSN. Welcome back, Kiosera's College Football Saturday. Bill Land, Dave Lapham, Emily Jones with you in Lincoln, Nebraska. Huskers 28, Louisiana Tech 10. Fourth quarter, first play, and Louisiana Tech first and 10 on their own 11 after a fumble recovery. See what the Bulldogs can do with this roaring crowd of 80,000 plus. Go deep, and it is complete. Wheeler, the 35, lost the football. And Nebraska's recovered. Wow. Oh, mama. Grixby got it back. You talk about staying with the play. I thought Grixby got thrown out of the way a little bit. I thought he got pushed out of the way. A 57-yard play. Boy, just air it out. Louisiana Tech saying, let's go deep again. We want to stay with that big play philosophy. Grixby just punches it out of there, stays with it, stays with it. I thought that Josh Wheeler pushed Grixby out of the way to get an advantage to make the catch. Then Grixby just kept ripping and ripping at it with that left arm. The ball came out, bounced around. Grixby fell on it. Big takeaway. Give me that thing, he says, as Grixby, who was injured earlier, obviously comes back with a vengeance. He had that shoulder problem. He's recovered from that. And Louisiana Tech comes away. So, well, all right, let's just treat it like a long punt. 57 yards. At least we got it out of our end. Nebraska brings it back on the ground with Cody Glenn. And let's now show you our eHarmony game summary as we get into the early moments of the fourth quarter. As Nebraska, they've moved it around in that passing game. Zach Taylor with 268 yards and a pair of scores. And Nebraska also dominating statistically. You know, if they hadn't self-destructed with a touchdown called back and another big play called back that was first and goal inside the 10-yard line, I think the numbers would reflect the score bigger. Total yardage, 411, 237 is the edge for Nebraska, and that includes that 57-yard pass play before the fumble. And now Jackson makes the tackle on Lucky here, 13 yards on the play, and he is slow to get up. Marlon Lucky, quite a shot. Yes, he did. It's almost like a down goes Frazier. I think he's just rung a little bit. He's uh, trying to get his balance. He's wobbly. He is losing. Take a look at the hit. See if it's a helmet to helmet, and, and it's oh, right in the back of the neck. The, the, the shot provided by Baker. And it folded him under a little bit there. Hopefully Lucky's okay. First and 10 at the 46. Taylor hands the football off. Glenn. 35. And out of bounds. Near the 31 yard line. Cody Glenn, 14 yards on the carry. Deion Young, a freshman from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, makes the tackle. First and, and guess what? Another first down. The first down line brought to you by Overstock.com with live customer service and an online price guarantee. Shopping online has never been easier. Overstock.com. Husker shift. First and 10 at the 31. Leading at 28 to 10. 13 28 to go in the ball game. Glenn found a hole again. Pushed it up. 20. Drags one with him across to the 19 yard line. Cody Glenn stopped by Sandy Ray Collins. Well, they pulled Big Mike Huff, and they ran a little bit of a power O to that uh, side. After they shifted the strength of the formation, here comes Huff, and he takes it inside, and they just form a wall and wash everything away, and Glenn says, thanks, guys. I'll just tuck it up inside of you and take, square my shoulder pads up and see what I can get out of this. Huskers first to 10, ball on the 19-yard line. And again, pitch to Glenn. Knifing through, a tackler misses, and Glenn again cuts back. And a horde of Bulldogs stop him, but not until he forges over the 10-yard line. Yeah, Lubin was the guy, Bill, that, that missed the tackle, kind of tried to knife his way through, as you described, and couldn't make the hit on Glenn. Gonna do more than arm tackle this big boy. 
Here comes Lubin trying to knife through guys, and you can't arm tackle him. You have to get your head and shoulder pads in front of him and drive your body through his. He'll just uh, take arm tackles and laugh at him. 12 carries, 71 yards. Lucky is 13 for 79. The top duo in this four-man running back crew. First and goal from the nine. And again, on the ground, Jackson gets the call as Brandon Jackson getting his second carry of the day. Kenny Wilson's the other back. Wilson with nine carries and 22 yards. Meanwhile, Taylor's thrown it for 281 yards today. Pulled big Mike Huff again from the right guard position. He almost got through the hole clean. He got picked up by some of the traffic. And if he had gotten to the linebacker level, that one might have popped. But Huff just got rerouted. And Nebraska, second and goal from the six. Tater to throw it and complete and touchdown Nebraska. Once again, this time Josh Hummer, the junior from Columbus, Nebraska. And that's the third different tight end that Nebraska has used. Matt Harrion, J.B. Phillips, and this time Mueller. Three touchdown passes to three different tight ends. That's utilization of your personnel. That's the West Coast offense at its best in the red zone. Tight ends are a big, big priority and can do some big, big damage. And they've gotten to them three times. Six yards on the pass play as Taylor gets the TD pass to Josh Mueller. And now Condon on for the point after. And it is good. So Nebraska got the ball back after the strip and now leads it 35 to 10 on Kia Sarah's college football Saturday from Lincoln. Nebraska with a 35-10 lead here in the fourth quarter. College football triple header continues after our game from Lincoln when Utah will take on the UCLA Bruins in high definition as both teams look to start the new season with a win. College football coverage continues all day right here on FSN. The triple header coming up. The kickoff right now here as Nebraska boots it to Louisiana Tech. And Jackson is brought down at the 24 yard line. We'll take a Dr. Pepper game break and check in with Mike Goldberg. Hey Bill, with the 12 games this year, some teams have already started conference play, including number 20 Oregon and Stanford. Kellen Clemens, Brady Leaf, forget about it. This team, the Oregon Ducks, now belong to the junior Dennis Dixon. This the first of two touchdowns on the day. Oregon in control at home, 34 to 10. Back to you and Lincoln. All right, thank you, Mike. Mike, kind of like that idea of having a conference game right in the early part of September. It gets everybody going. That's happening out there in the Pac-10 here in Nebraska. Trying to pull away and doing so for Louisiana Tech as they have shut out the Bulldogs from Ruston, Louisiana in the second half. Carriker making the tackle that time. Both offensive coordinators, Bill, have uh, been very balanced in their play selection. At the end of the third quarter, Tech has thrown it 19 times, run it 19 times. Nebraska run it 33 times, thrown it 31 times. One play from being totally balanced. They both want that 50-50 mix. Second and 11. And Champion delivers. On the look in to Wheeler got 12 yards and that'll be a first down. So Louisiana Tech will move the chains here. I think Jack McNell has found himself a quarterback. Yeah, I, I mean, like his play. Huh? Yeah, I, 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 this, this he is not he has not crumbled under pressure whatsoever. They didn't want to put the game on him right away. You know, the burden of responsibility fall on fall on him. But Jack wanted to see how would, how would he handle the game speed. You know, it's different decision making trying to simulate Nebraska's defensive practice to seeing the real thing in Lincoln. He's responded well. First to ten for champion. Got time here and drills to Jonathan Holland. Holland, who's had a fantastic day. And I'll tell you what, they're gonna have to go a ways to match his sensational touchdown grab here for the rest of this season because he has been phenomenal. That was an individual highlight reel right there. I mean, to be running full speed and extend the left hand like he did, catch it with the left hand, secure it to the body and never break stride and get both feet in bounds inside the pylon was just a phenomenal play. Six grabs, 126 yards for the day, but that was his first reception in the second half. He put the clamps on it. 
Now they look in across the middle and it is complete to Newman. He comes back to the 35 where he's brought down from behind. Nebraska coming up with Steinkuhler on the play. Ty Steinkuhler, the 280 pound sophomore from here in Lincoln, stops a 16 yard gain. Well, what he did after the catch was extraordinary. Not only making the catch, but then changing direction and, and leaving everybody in his wake. And he's, he was number two in the country last year in terms of percentage of his catches being touchdowns. 30 catches, eight of them went for touchdowns. Almost 27% of his catches were scores. First and 10 at the 34. Louisiana Tech trying to answer. Down by 25. Oh, my goodness. Nice mitts by Holland once again. As he stretches for the grab at the 21 yard line and a stop by Andrew Shandler. That's the thing I like about him, Bill. And, you know, obviously he's got great speed to stretch the field 10, 400 meters. But look at how he plucks the football here. Soft hand, he catches the back half of the football and, and, he, and he takes the hit. He's tough. He sinks his hips, gets in and out of cuts. He's a good route runner. He's not a track guy trying to play football. He's a football player with great track speed. He runs a little track when he's got time. First and 10 at the 21. 9.32 counting here in the fourth though. Uh -oh. Football is tipped off the hand of the receiver Newman and falls to the it ground. Newman led the team in catches, yards, touchdowns last year. He was the guy. And the, basically Nebraska decided to take him out of the action. Well they said okay you're going to do that and put Jonathan Hall in the single coverage. We'll go there. And that's what Jack McNell has when you have multiple receivers. Wheeler Newman and Holland you can't double them all somebody's going to have to beat one on one coverage and today for the most part Jonathan Holland was isolated one on one in the perimeter and he beat it yeah, Newman had eight scores last year James breaks early here the tight end for Louisiana Tech ball start 89 offense five yard penalty still second down the key today I thought though other than Adam character they could didn't have an answer for him and they were moving him around. I, I think it's very wise for Kevin Cosgrove, the defensive coordinator, to move him around and try to find the best mismatch to take advantage of his pass rush abilities. But the blitz pickup by the running backs and the blitzing linebackers has been extraordinary for Champion. Second and 15, Champion out of the shotgun here. And hit just as he tried to drop it forward to Patrick Jackson. And Jay Moore was there to provide the bump. Jay Moore, 6'4", 280 pounds with speed as well. And this front four is pretty relentless. There's no doubt about it. We've said at the beginning of the broadcast last year, 50 sacks led the nation. 140 tackles for loss also led the nation. 190 times they got teams off schedule. That is big time. And the players are saying yesterday, Hey, we should have had 60 last year. Right there. I mean, they are nowhere near settled. Uh, these guys are frothing about their ability to create havoc. Five yard penalty. Still third down. James again with the miscue. So third down and 20 now. The ball on the 31. That was one of the one of the keys. He jumped. You lost him out of screen a little bit. Tight end. But as you see, Nebraska moving up front. Real shifted their defense line, the linebackers accordingly, and sometimes get a little antsy, get a little jumpy. You have to just listen to the quarterback and miss that snap down. Third and 20 now for Louisiana Tech. Zach Champion. Oh. And it is picked off. That is Rude. And Rude is brought down at the 35 yard line. Possession, Cornhuskers. And that's not booing, that's the crowd chanting Rude. They chanted that for. Decades here, haven't they? They sure have. I played with this guy's dad, Tom Rude, Rudy Ray, we used to call him. Number one draft pick coming out of Nebraska. Champion just lost total track of Rude as he's just kind of free underneath. Never saw the linebacker. Saw his receiver beat the cornerback inside, but Bo Rude got a nice drop into coverage and hit him right between the numbers. He had a great season going last year until he broke his arm. But does brother Barrett now playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Tom Root, as I talked about, a couple of uncles. I mean, everybody played here in Nebraska. Yeah, man. Uh, Roods are a tradition. And running the ball has been a tradition in Nebraska, and it's strong today as the new quarterback Gans gives it to Cody Glenn. And the Husker rambles for 18 yards. 
Yeah. Atlanta will take over the rushing leadership with that for the day. We're taking, getting to the point of the game, Bill, where rolling four different running backs in there and having some depth in the offensive line starts to wear on Louisiana Tech. You know, I, I think now it's a case of just too many athletes on the Nebraska side of things. And, you know, you have to, you have starters playing special teams for Louisiana Tech, a couple of special teams apiece. At some point, the gas tank starts to run on fumes. You see the Huskers dominating on the run, and you see the new quarterback, Gans. Joe is a 6'2", 210-pound sophomore from Palos Heights, Illinois. And he's a Texan. We got ball. Number 27, yeah. Kenny Wilson. As Wilson was the ball carrier. They sort him out down there with 8.40 to go in the football game. Yeah. Strong hands and wrists. Sometimes it doesn't end up with the guy that had it initially. Sometimes I've been in those situations getting those piles. Man, the guys are scratching, biting, clawing, and all of a sudden somebody rips the ball out of your hands. Gans redshirted in 04. Last year, a backup to Taylor. And as we've told you, Taylor's so durable. Gans did not get much playing time. Bill Callahan says, Terry Gannon type. That's how I would classify this guy. Right. And uh, again, he's not saying Terry Gannon, but Terry Gannon type. And that tells you quite a bit. To make plays with his feet. Very athletic. Throws the football incomplete. Well defended that time. Intended for Jackson out of the back. Intended for number 32. Jackson. The other thing that. Uh, that Coach Callahan liked about Gans is being a student of the game. In the West Coast offense, you do have to have some intelligence. He throws a nice ball here, very tight spiral, right on the money. It's just off the outstretched arm. I mean, you can't throw it much better than that. Brandon Jackson just could not corral it. Quinn Harris did a nice job to get in there and mix it up just enough to make sure that thing wasn't completed. Third down and five, the ball on the 41. Yeah, that was a linebacker running 20 yards downfield with a running back. That was great coverage. Harris has been impressive today. He's made some plays. He's the one that tipped the tipped the ball that they intercepted after the uh, the fumbled punt by his team. Timeout called on a third and five situation Nebraska. for Nebraska. We'll be right back at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. You're watching Kiosara's College Football Saturday. Welcome back to Lincoln, Nebraska. The Cornhuskers on top by a score of 35 to 10. We are inside the new facilities, the new suites here in Lincoln. And one of the Nebraska Cornhuskers biggest fans is Larry the Cable Guy. Larry, what do you think about this? Well, I tell you what, this is a blast. We got, you know, I grew up here in uh, Nebraska, lived here 16 years and moved to Florida. But I've only been to four games, and uh, now I was able to get one of these suites. I got a good deal on it. It's uh, $400 a month, but I got to bring my own cooler. So, but it was worth it. We're having a blast out here today. Now, I understand you've made it out to some Cornhusker practices. You're kind of getting yourself familiar with the team. Yeah, you know what? I went out. They uh, needed a pulling guard, so I come out and kind of tried out for it, but I hurt my ankle within the first 20 seconds. Uh, but no, I went down and, and uh, did some jokes for the team, and it was just a thrill. You know, I can perform in front of 10,000 people, but the minute I got in front of that team, I was like, blah, blah, blah. I didn't know what to say. It was, it, was a, it, I, it was just such a thrill. So, yeah, I'm a big Husker fan. Well, the Huskers are going to get her done. Get her done. <laughs> and the Huskers got her done just now with a touchdown. Guys, send it back up to you. All right. Don't have too much fun up there. Brandon Jackson got her done. And Nebraska <laughs> adding it on here 41 to 10. How about the contact balance of Jackson as he got her done? That was a big time. Stay on your feet showing that contact balance. Everybody getting in the act, including Larry the Cable Guy. How about that? Here's the snap and the kick. And is good as Nebraska gets the point after. And the Huskers now lead it 42 to 10. Here's a look at Jackson's run to the end zone. Here's the Kyocera wireless call of the game from Larry the Cable Guy. Team, I was like, blah, 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 blah. I didn't know what to say. It was, it, was a, it, I, it was just such a thrill. So, yeah, I'm a big Husker fan. Well, the Huskers are going to get her done. Get her done, baby, get her done. And there it is, that famous phrase. Say it one more time. They did get her done. Jake Wesh, who had the point after, by the way, for Nebraska, kicks it off here. 
coming on for Congdon and the return out to the 30 and let's check in with Mike Goldberg on a Dr. Pepper game break. Bill you mentioned it earlier game three of our triple header here on FSN will feature UCLA hosting Utah available in high definition. 23 year old sophomore Ben Olsen will make his first career start. He and now is running the Bruins offense that game top of the hour back to you and Lincoln. All right, thank you, Mike. Bill Callahan seeing his ball club cruise now. 42 to 10, 728 to go. Louisiana Tech comes on with the new quarterback as well. And nothing doing on that play as Mosley, the new quarterback. And our Super 8 scoring drive for Callahan's Huskers. Five plays, 64 yards. Jackson, the 25 yard TD run. And one pass on the drive as the first completion in the career of Gans. And Coach Callahan got to be pleased with that overall domination. 303 yards passing, 239 rushing today. Not balanced, you got balance. Absolutely. And, uh, that's what the West Coast offense is all about. When it's coming on all cylinders, it is about balance. You can attack them either way successfully. The pass is complete out to the 32 yard line. Pass from Mosley complete to number 17. Ryan, Ryan Carroll. Carroll gets his first reception. Here's Michael Mosley out of New Orleans, a redshirt freshman. Played at Landry High School, also a baseball standout there. And he getting some time here. Because obviously, 13 game schedule in the competition Louisiana Tech's playing. You got to make sure your backups get some experience because they are an inexperienced group as well as champion was coming in today. And you look at this for, for Mosley. Mosley's passing. How about the situation to bring in? It's, it's, it's at Lincoln, Nebraska against the top 25 team and a highly rated defensive football team. Jack McNell says, OK, go get your feet wet. And, and that's going to help him. I mean, this is after, after being exposed to this, the game is going to slow down for him. It's going to be a lot easier for sure. Oh, thank you very much. Kegel's punt. And it rolls to the 49. And that's where Nebraska will get it with 635 remaining after a 13 yard kick. College football on FSN is presented by Kyocera Wireless. Take your texting to the next level with the Kyocera Strobe. Kyocera Wireless reminds you to dial responsibly. And brought to you in part by Direct TV. Direct TV rethinking the way TV should be. By Super 8, see you along the way. And by Dr. Pepper, 23 flavors that add up to one bold taste. Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. Huskers with Gans back at the controls, and he hands it off on a first and 10 at the 49. And ball carried by number 27, Kenny Wilson. Kenny Wilson gets the carry, and here's a Dave, evaluate, if you will, the rushing game for Nebraska. Glenn with 88 yards, Marlon with 79, Jackson with 36 and a touch, and then Wilson now his 11th carry, 30 yards. Well, they, they got done what they wanted to get done. They got all four talented running backs involved, and I think the offensive line started to take control of the line of scrimmage. It doesn't matter who your running back is. If that doesn't happen, you're not going to be successful. I think Bill Callahan thinks it's probably a good start for his running game. Hands hands this one off to Wilson and dives forward to the 40 yard line. Number 27, Kenny Wilson, the ball carrier. Now, can the running game improve? Right now, Absolutely. Are Major. they a finished product in the running game? Not even close. But you have to start somewhere. And, and when you watch Nebraska, and here you see who I think is going to be a star. I, I think this guy's got big time written all over him. He's a, he's a freak physically to be able to run a 4 4 40 with that kind of size, six feet, 220 pounds. But you see it all day long, tight ends changing the strength of the formation motion. That's trying to break the defense down with a man short at the point of attack. Third and one. And number 27, Kenny Wilson, the ball carrier. Wilson, the ball carrier. Right down by number 46. Well, the other thing, Wilson's a guy, he's another one of these guys at great speed. As they mentioned, he was a state champ in the 100 and 200 in his high school days in Liberal, Kansas. First down line brought to you by Overstock.com. Whether you order a big screen TV or a comfy chair, it all ships for $2.95. Shop and save at Overstock.com. See, you see this motion bill that I'm talking about right here, these guys motioning? 
what it's trying to do is, is make Louisiana Tech not line up properly. And there's what happens. You, know, it, 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 you, you end up with the motion. If you don't adjust to it properly, all you're looking for is that split second of hesitation by the linebackers of the defensive lineman. What's my gap? Filled the wrong gap. Went backside, tried to backdoor it instead of coming over the top. You know, and, and uh, Chad Beveridge took a chance and it, and it came up wrong for him. But that's a, that's a lot of yards by a bunch of different people. And they've totaled 259 yards now as a ball club rushing. Second and one, the ball on the 29. And Wilson gang tackled there. Both these teams have Nickel State next. Nebraska huh. will play Nickel State next weekend, and then Louisiana Tech has the week off, and they get them on the 16th. But after that, well, Bill Callahan, he's got the great deal of the only team in the country to get to play both of the national title game participants from a year ago, USC, and of course, Texas in Big 12 play. Louisiana Tech down the road, AM at Clemson and at Boise after they host Nichols. So talk about a backbreaker to get their season underway. And for their first five games for Louisiana Tech's on the road. Third and oh, one. Gans got a man wide open. Touchdown, Huskers. Right end again. As Nebraska pours it on. And Tia Fatiller with the reception and gets another touchdown for the Huskers. That's the fourth different tight end. It's done a pretty good, watch this hit right here. Blitz pick up, take him to the ground, cut him in half, and the tight end is wide open. The fourth different tight end catches a touchdown in this West Coast offense. Tight end in the red zone, the West Coast offense is deadly. Hunter Tia Fatiller with the touchdown and the first career touchdown pass for Joe Gans and the Huskers a lot of first today in front of a record crowd of 85,181 West with a kick 49 10 Big 12 football on FSN is brought to you part by Dr. Pepper. Nebraska pouring it on 49 10 here in Lincoln as the Huskers getting everybody into the act. Tia Fatiller on that last touchdown reception. You see Harrion, who's had a comeback day, as he too has been in on the touchdown party. And now they kick it off. And here comes Louisiana Tech on the return. As Riser brings it out. Chris Riser, a freshman from Houston. Well, of course, Jack Bignell was a part of one of the biggest days in college football in 84 when Doug Flutie, the Heisman Trophy winner, in his Hail Mary pass against Miami back in 84. Bicknell was an offensive lineman for his center. father's team. He was the center snapping the ball right there and uh, this is this is a historic play probably one of the most historic plays in all of college football. Gerard Phelan makes the catch. Couldn't believe that they let a defender or a defender let a, a receiver get beyond them at that sequence at that stage of the game. It was incredible. And Mosley hands it off to Franklin. Franklin is tackled at the 32. Well, it's fond memories for Coach Jack Bicknell. And he says, I love talking about it. Everybody always asks me about it. And uh, he was uh, certainly concerned, though, that he didn't want to mess the play up. Right. When you look at the actual play, I got knocked right on my butt, which happened a few times that game. And, and I was sort of on my back. And instinctively, I just reached up to try to grab the guy. Thank goodness I didn't. But uh, as every touchdown, when you're an offensive lineman, you're always looking around for a yellow flag before you celebrate too much. So uh, thank goodness I didn't hold. And uh, I'm sure my mom wouldn't even let me back in the house that night. So it was, uh, it was a great, great experience. My dad being the head coach and everything was uh, just a wonderful experience. Dad on the left, son on the right. Incredible. Come back. Not enjoying his day here, but he's got some things to draw from. He just missed an incomplete pass. And it is now third and fourth the 31. And I think uh, considering so many new guys making their starts today, particularly on the uh, defensive unit of things, that uh, overall there's there's some great talent there. And I think uh, if they can survive that uh, juggernaut of a schedule, some good things ahead for the Bulldogs. I, I think they showed in the first half that they could play with people. I think they ran out of gas a little bit in the second half, but he's got a competitive bunch of kids. Mosley under pressure and incomplete. Batted away there in the secondary. Grixby. 
Let's face it, when you come to Lincoln, Nebraska, and it's sold out for the 276th consecutive time, it's, it's not an easy place to come and win. Not many people have. It's a real test for your, uh, your team, there's no doubt. Yeah, that sellout string goes back to 1962, and the Huskers have another string of 21 straight season opening wins. And that is the best in the country as well. Last time they lost a season opener was 83 against Florida State. Here's the punt, and none will stay away from it. And will take a bulldog roll inside the 30 down to near the 27-yard line. And that's where Nebraska will get possession after a 36-yard kick and 142 remaining to play here at Memorial Stadium. You know, speaking of that uh, historic play a little bit longer, Doug Flutie, uh, right after that play, Donald Trump signed with the New Jersey Generals. And he won the Heisman. Basically, that play sealed the Heisman for him. And I, I played with Doug Flutie uh, for a year with the Generals. And what a magnificent improviser. I mean, he, he was incredible. And went on to have a 20-year professional career in the Canadian Football League, USFL, and NFL. Tremendously gifted athlete. All right, Gans brings him back out here with 1.23 to go. Genuflect. Victory formation. There you go. He'll take a knee. And uh, Bill Callahan and not looking to rub anything in here. They've gotten everybody pretty much into the act as well. An impressive second half performance, particularly for the Huskers, as they throw a shutout in the final two quarters after this game was 14 10 with 236 to go in the second period. And then Nebraska answered just before intermission, and then they answered again to start the second half. I think that was the critical uh, part of the game. They score to take a two score lead. They're up four. They score right before that to go up 11. And then they come right back out, get possession of the football to start the third quarter, and they go up 18. And then it was tough for uphill sledding for Louisiana Tech from there. And Nebraska on a day with 588 total yards, and that may be subtracting a couple here on these final plays. But uh, uh, they got the offense cranked up, and they hold Louisiana Tech to 305 yards. And Nebraska makes it a convincing win here today 49 to 10 as the Huskers get things off to a great start Zach Taylor had an outstanding afternoon as well as the senior quarterback threw it to a variety of receivers today and Taylor with an outstanding passing game to boot Nebraska with a win of 49 to 10 over Louisiana Tech Taylor 287 yards passing and three touchdowns he had 22 of 34 and had one intercepted and their running game gave him every opportunity to unload through the year and let's go down now with Emily Jones and head coach Bill Callahan all right coach a tale of two halves you're down or excuse me up 11 yeah, <laughs> up I'm now. sorry I'm sorry up 11 at the break outscore him 39 to nothing in the second half yeah. got to be pleased with that second half performance I really am I thought our players played hard and to their credit and I thought our coaches did an excellent job preparing our players I thought our conditioning really paid off in the second half. You said all week long you were going to play all four running backs, and a lot of us thought maybe you were pulling our leg. You were serious. No, I was serious, <laughs> and they're all good players, and I thought they got good work today. Uh, I really am proud of the way they carried the ball, and we'll get better. We'll learn from this game, and we'll get better. You have to be pleased with the balance as well. Oh, absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about that, getting the passing well, and the running you know, going at the same time? We just wanted to mix up. We're a little bit more heavier in play action and running the ball out some heavier sets than we normally are. And we just wanted to get some work with our tight end. So all in all, we are pleased with the effort by our players. All right, Coach, congratulations, 1-0. We you. do appreciate it again. Nebraska wins it by a final of 49-10 to over Louisiana Tech. That's going to do it for us here in Lincoln. Time to pitch it to the guys in L.A.